defending Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Raiders backs to the wall of the AFC West have one healthy veteran quarterback, Mark Wilson, available for tonight's crucial meeting with the Seattle Seahawks. And even Wilson, coming off a battering a week ago against the Bears, will go tonight with a very sore thumb on his passing hand. Five weeks ago, Mark Wilson was a dominant force in the Raiders' 28-14 victory over Seattle, passing for 309 yards and three touchdowns. Multi-talented Marcus Allen, perhaps the premier receiver from the backfield, had only four receptions that day, but they were good for over 170 yards. Meanwhile, Seattle, with the incomparable safety, Kenny Easley, has put together a defense that has shut out three opponents this year, two in the last two weeks. They have a string of nine quarters without giving up a score, and the defense has generated over half the team's points thus far this season. Easley has five of Seattle's league-leading 26 interceptions, and Easley and his colleagues have returned seven of those interceptions for touchdowns. Seattle quarterback Dave Craig will be Mark Wilson's counterpart tonight. Craig and his offensive teammates, while overshadowed by an opportunistic defense, are not without some of the game's finest talent. Steve Larkin, a wide receiver, is a constant threat, and his record over nine years is one of the best in NFL history. Not big, not fast, Larkin is always effective. Craig and Largent will need the time to execute tonight, and one of the key Raiders defensive linemen dedicated to not allowing that time is number 77, Lyle Alzado. Alzado, now in his 14th year, personifies the Raiders. Play it rough, play it tough, on the edge. Just win, baby, win. Tonight, live from the Kingdome in Seattle, it's the Raiders and Seahawks in a critical battle in the AFC West. To a sold-out Kingdome in Seattle. Seahawks fans have waited five weeks for this rematch against the Raiders, a rematch of the AFC Championship game a year ago. Let's take a look at the standings in a bitterly fought AFC Western Division. Denver on top with a comeback win yesterday over San Diego. Seattle is there with 8-2, and two, the Raiders 7-3. and three. For the Raiders, so much on the line tonight. They've lost a pair to Denver. That'll hurt them. And a tremendous crowd on hand. The Raiders have problems at quarterback. Don knows about problems with quarterbacks. He's got a very sore thumb, Don. Thumb is going to be a problem, I think, Frank, but last week against the Bears, poor old Mark Wilson got a lot of things hurt besides his thumb. I think the thumb will heal up. He's been throwing. I've watched him. He's doing a good job. Uh, as soon as that old adrenaline starts pumping, he's going to be okay. He's going to be hit a lot tonight, I think, O.J., and that's that Seattle defense. Well, the, the Raiders have a problem. they got to try to slow down this Seattle defense, which is led by this man, Jacob Green. He, along with Joe Nash and Jeff Bryan, have applied the pressure that has enabled this team to have 40 total sacks and 26 interceptions. That leads the NFL, Frank, and if the Raiders are going to win, they're going to have to protect the quarterback. We are set to go, and there is electricity here in the kingdom. All right. It has been building all week long. T-shirts. You can't find them anymore, but they're in the audience tonight, all in white. They're saying Raider Busters. They've written songs about the Seahawks team. We're set to go. The Raiders will kick off. Chris Barr puts it up high, and here comes David Hughes. And Hughes out over the 20-yard line. Uh, and the man that will lead them out will be Dave Craig. But there's a flag. The flag is down. And quickly, we get an indication from the Raiders that it will work against the Seahawks. Okay, Dave Craig, this year 56%, took over midseason a year ago. He does not make mistakes. He's an ideal quarterback for Chuck Knox. He controls the offense. He had tough sledding, however, early when the Seahawks and the Raiders got together in that game five weeks ago. And then, of course, he had a disastrous day in the AFC Championship game. There you look at the offensive unit for the Seahawks. Of course, the man they like to go to is Steve Largent. He is a great receiver. The Seahawks backed up to the 12-yard line. Holding is the call. First down and 10 Seahawks. Their setbacks, David Hughes and Zach Dixon. Largent works out of the backfield. Zach Dixon left. And the much-traveled Zach Dixon moves for about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. And this man who... Went out of that first game with a torn stomach muscle. Is back reactivated just today. He is available, but they would prefer not to play. There was a question right up until the 1 o'clock deadline this afternoon as to whether or not they would reactivate Plunkett. 
that this man has more lives than a cat. He has made so many comebacks, and he, if he has to, we know will be out there. Second down and seven. Now Hughes is in with Zach Dixon. Dixon, 31. Hughes is 46. David Hughes, right side, and he's upended. Let's take a look at the defensive unit as Hughes picks up a couple of yards, and there they are. The pressure, of course, comes from the big man, Howie Long. Lyle Alzado plays it cozy, but then he'll turn it loose. The quarterbacks will be looking at this linebacker, the quarterback for the Seahawks. Brad Van Pelt, of course, 11-year veteran of the Giants. Starts at that strong side, and the finest corners in football, not even arguable, Mike Haynes and Lester Hayes. Third down and three. Dave Craig brings them up. Single setback, as we see so often with Seattle, is Dan Adorni. Good on picking up the blitz, number 33. Also good as a receiver. From the shotgun, Craig steps into the pocket, throws underneath. Fires is complete to Largent, and Largent has just caught a pass for the 102nd consecutive game of his remarkable career. He was taken there by Rod Martin. First down, Seattle. And you looked at that statistic for what they usually do on that third down. It didn't look too optimistic. 17%, they make that situation. Came under with their sure-headed receiver, Largent. I enjoy watching him play, Juice. He seems to get open, doesn't well, he? Well, he does the job week in and week out, and thus far this game is going just the way Chuck Knox wants it to go. He's going to run the ball more than he's going to throw the ball, and when he throws it, he's going to throw safe passes like that. The ball at the 25-yard line. David Hughes, single setback. First down and 10, Seattle. Hughes works to the left, and he runs into Rod Martin, and down he goes. He gets perhaps three yards to bring up a second down and seven. This Raider team was really battered a week ago by the Chicago Bears, not so much in the scoreboard, but they sacked Raider quarterbacks nine times, and now we have an injured Raider, and that is Van McElroy, perhaps overshadowed by the cornerbacks, but a pro bowler and really a super defensive back. So they're going to look at Van McElroy as we look at Chuck Knox, now in his second year here at Seattle. He took them to the AFC Championship a year ago. He's been a winner everywhere. There's Van McElroy. He was in on that tackle of David Hughes. One would suspect that he perhaps hit him straight on and probably pinched a nerve in his neck. He ran off the field, appears to be all right. He's been replaced by Stacy Torrin, a rookie out of Notre Dame, and a four-year starter there at Notre Dame. Torrin, where number 30. Second down and a long six. Zach Dixon, good running by Dixon out over the 30-yard line. He was to hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he scrambles for one. It'll bring up third down and four, a passing situation for Seattle. They make their specialty changes, as will the Raiders. Don, you know, you would think it would be difficult to run against the Raiders. They have such good cornerbacks that they can play those outside men man-to-man, -man, so essentially they have nine guys to stop the run. Now, most teams will have to play a safety helping out on one of the wide receivers, but when you have great cornerbacks like the Raiders, you can let the other nine guys play against the run. The rookie, Daryl Turner, from Michigan State, moves up to the top of your screen, number 81. Steve Larson to the right. He is the man that Craig will look for. Turner and a great defensive play. Uh-oh. Oh, was it too quick? Mike Haynes moved against Turner, and the flag is down. It may have been pass interference, but it certainly was a pretty job of defending, <laughs> wasn't it? He came over and got that hand right in front of it and knocked it out. He looked like he may have put his right hand on his back just to keep him tripping over him. Referee tonight, Jim Tunney. Pass interference, defense, number 22, first down. Mike Haynes, he's one of the best. He timed this beautifully, but he must have got a hand on there. Darrell Turner, your receiver, coming in there. He had that one bump. Now, let's see what it... Yep. Well, gosh, that's just awfully close, man. Yeah. I'll tell you. Right hand on the back. The left hand deflecting the ball. First and 10. Seattle at the 35-yard line. Boy, they make it tough on defensive backs. Van McElroy back in the game at free safety for the Raiders. Larger in motion. Craig looks to Larson, and this time under pressure, under throws. Good pass pressure against Craig. Alzado was in there. Long was in there. They tried a little blitz that time. The blitz was picked up pretty well in the middle of the line. 
Tom Flores has done a remarkable job with this Raider team now in his sixth year. There was a little stat you maybe mentioned that last week against the Bears, the quarterbacks, the Raider quarterbacks were sacked nine times. That almost was a record. The record was ten. And they were sacked, and that was when Tom Flores and Cotton Davidson were quarterbacks. Boy, you're going back a way down. That must have been 61 or 60. Well, I've been a fan all my life, you know. Flores' first five years, he won two Super Bowls. That's hard to duplicate. Second and ten. Dixon single setback. Ball at the 35-yard line. No score here from the Kingdom in Seattle. This is Zach Dixon. And Dixon hit. Fine tackle coming up to make the stop. James Davis. Gain of a maybe a yard for Zach Dixon, who has been well traveled around the NFL. And here is the man that seems to just have extra special days and evenings against the Seattle Seahawks. He had a remarkable game in the AFC Championship game a year ago. That's what they have done on third and long, or third and nine or more. They are over five. And they're looking right now at third down and nine. Blair Bush provides a snap for Dave Craig in the shotgun. Uh -huh. was on, and Craig had Turner. He was not there for first down yardage, but Craig overthrows. And it'll be the punting unit coming on for Seattle. And dropping deep will be Greg Pruitt. Greg Pruitt, who early in his career with Cleveland was one of the outstanding return men in the league. Look at that the stat right there, though. That's an amazing eight fumbles on punt returns this year. That's they talk about Marcus Allen. He has eight fumbles carrying the football and on receiving. But quite frankly, Pruitt does not like to fair catch the football, and he has been hit rather hard on many occasions. Jeff West. He doesn't kick it long. Oh, he has it so high, which he does now, and Pruitt inside the 20. All right, good move to get out close to the 28-yard line by Greg Pruitt. It'll be first and ten. The Raiders have the football, and they bring out their offensive unit. Boy, the city has really been turned on for this past week. And winning six of the last seven, well, who can fault? Fame has taken over the kingdom. It began here in Seattle, the University of Washington, and they do it, I guess, basically to perfection. They're quite proud of it. Meanwhile, the Raiders have a first down and 10, their first possession of the night. The ball up a 28-yard line. Mark Wilson is in there. We've talked about his thumb. He was in getting x-rayed last week against the Bears, the second time he had been knocked out of that game, when all of a sudden David Hum went down, and they trotted him back out, and he finished the game. I have already mentioned that Jim Plunga, who has been out for six weeks, has been activated. He would be available, and they also have Jerry Goldstein, who has been much traveled in the NFL. That has also been with the Raiders, so he knows the system. Wilson back and looking deep. The French intended receiver. Branch, too, has been out for two games with a full groin muscle. Take a look at the offensive unit. First, that offensive line, which is very critical to the Raiders. Their quarterbacks are not all that mobile, but it has been made over. There are what you could characterize as your skill players Barnwell and Branch great speed on the outside the offensive line however Mosbar heard in practice this past week he's out of the lineup he's replaced by Mickey Marvin but he started two Super Bowls there at right guard Charlie Hanna left guard replaced by Kirk Marsh Shelby Jordan a great New England player until a year ago has replaced Bruce Davis at left tackle second down and ten Kenny King and uh -huh. Seattle stretches it out and Terry Jackson upsets Kenny King right at the line of scrimmage Got a feeling when you saw Mark Wilson open up the ball game with that long bomb. He's saying, look, I don't want anybody to think my thumbs hurt. Watch this. He's going to throw. But in my opinion, the ball was not thrown as well as, as Mark can throw it. I don't know what that was. I guess he's just saying, hey, let me get this thing out of my mind. I don't have a sore thumb. He well, might have defeated his purpose. He's, yeah. got, he's got some other problems up here because this is a loud stadium, and these are smart fans. Whenever you see the wave here, it's going to be when the Raiders have the ball. That's right. Third down and ten. There he goes Wilson. again. Barnwell, this time the intended receiver, and Kenny Easley back there racing Barnwell for the football. Barnwell goes down, no flags, and out comes Ray Guy. The Raiders turn back on their first possession of the night. Boy, they are noisy. They are noisy. And the Raiders played Raider football, didn't they? They threw deep twice and...
Tried one of their little sweet plays. Nothing happened, though. Gray guy averaging 42.3 yards into the night. And dropping deep is Kenny Easley, who took over that job for an injured Paul Johns. But now it's Scancy who is back there as Easley gets a breather. There's Scancy, a former Pittsburgh Steeler, acquired a few weeks ago, and he makes the fair catch at the 32-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10, second possession for Seattle. And Chuck Knox has the last word with quarterback Dave Craig. The second meeting of the Raiders and the Seahawks in this AFC Western Division. The Seahawks are 8-2. They trail Denver 10-1. A win tonight, and they'll be one game behind Denver. The Raiders are 7-3. They are in trouble if they lose tonight. First down and 10, Seahawks at the 31-yard line. David Hughes over the left side, and that's the kind of football you're going to watch tonight. Both of these teams feature powerful, overwhelming-type defenses. And, of course, one has only had to, has to admire this Seahawks offense, even though they are ranked ninth in the AFC, 22nd in the NFL, and moving the ball in terms of yardage. But keep in mind that they lost Kurt Warner in the very first game of the season. Kurt Warner represented 1,700 yards of offense for him a year ago. They have hung in there. They have made up for it on defense, and they continue to do so. Second down and eight, Zach Dixon out around the 35-yard line where it'll be third down and six. I want to remind you, live at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central Time, and that is 8 o'clock Pacific Time, Thursday night from New York City, New York. It's the golden night in boxing history as five members of the 84 United States Olympic boxing team make their professional debut. Mark Breland, Cornell Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor, Evander Holyfield, and Tyrell Biggs, all a one spectacular card. You remember them from the Summer Olympics. You'll see it this Thursday live at 8 7 o'clock Central here on ABC, and Jim Lampley will be talking with Mark Breland at halftime, as long as there's a feature on, fun feature on some of the bastards in the NFL. Third down, long yardage. Craig scampers away from the run raider. Fires, gets a complete to Larger, but a flag is down. Larger breaks into the clear. The taken from behind. Uh, Mike Davis caught Larger, but the flag is down. And the uh, Seahawks know what it is, too. You can see the big old offensive lineman back there, and he says, yep. It's what happens when you roll out of the pocket. An offensive lineman blocking with pressure. All of a sudden, the defensive man moves with the moving quarterback. And there is that tendency to grab and hold. That well, negated a 51-yard pickup. You have to give Largen credit, though. I mean, Craig, Craig was looking for Largen. He shook his man loose. Got him Holding open. 59. 10 yards, down remains the same. Blair Bush, the man in the middle, the center, holding. You'll see it. He provides a snap on the shotgun. I think the point you made's good, too. If you look at it, got Craig tries to make a move. He's got him pretty well, <laughs> he's got him pretty well locked in there, it looks like. He just took Bill Pickell and dropped him. But Craig didn't have any place to go, so he rolled out, and that's that's when they can see him. They've got those jerseys, and the guy makes the move, and they see him dragging him down. Well, he knew who to look for, and he found him larger. That's right. Third down and 18. The ball now back at the 24-yard line. The Seahawks again from the shotgun. That's Caster, Chris Caster in motion. And it's Piquel, this time fighting through Blair Bush. The pressure came from the outside in the form of Greg Townsend. Greg had to step inside, and Piquel was there. And Piquel is playing, of course, for Reggie Kinlaw, who's been there most of the time. He's out with a groin injury, and Piquel just kept moving. That was really the defensive second there. They had him pretty well covered, no place to go, and David couldn't move. Finally caught up with him. Where Greg Pruitt, he stands at his own 45-yard line. An opportunity to give the Raiders good field position. Jeff West once again. He doesn't kick it long. He just kicks it high. As he does once again. And pretty long. Pruitt doesn't, doesn't even hesitate. He knew with the height of that ball, he'd have to call for the fair catch, and he did so inside his own 40-yard line. Lyle Alzado, one of the finest, now in his 14th year. Raiders right now in a better fight with the Seattle Seahawks. No score. 7.56 remaining in the first quarter. And first and 10, here comes Marcus Allen around the left side. And just bowling ahead behind Kurt Marsh, Mickey Marvin, both out in front of it. And he gets good yardage out over the 45-yard line. A gain of about seven. It'll be second down and three. 
Well, the Raiders did a good job on that. They didn't do any fancy blocking up front. Every man just got on a man, and they just tried to push him, and that's pretty much the way the Washington Redskins play. They kind of bulldoze you up front. And the Raiders would be a better running football team if they used that philosophy. Raiders have struggled. With that graphic will tell you that. Hawkins. And Frank Hawkins inside Seattle Seahawk territory at the 48-yard line. First down Raiders. Keith Butler defensively there for Seattle. Frank Hawkins. Of course, I wonder if you ever get over that happening that took place and the loss to Denver in overtime. Tom Flores on first and 10 at the 12-yard line. Decided to get a little better field goal angle. Hawkins, who does not fumble the football, had carried it 60 times up to that point without a fumble. Topped it up. Denver ultimately went on to win in overtime. One first down. Whoa. Marcus Allen. Oh, he is hammered by Keith Butler. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage, and he'll lose about a yard. Keith Butler likes it a little. He's a little more comfortable in the middle. He was a middle linebacker in his high school, his college days, and when he first came up here, had him on the outside. He likes it back in the middle. You see Marcus taking off in the middle, and there, you don't like to see that, do you, Juice? Not at all. He defeated <laughs> his man over the middle. It looked like it may have been Dave Dalby. Made a good play out of it. Uh, Keith Butler is an awfully fine middle linebacker, or inside linebacker, I guess they call him now. Second down and long. Wilson is back. Looks to Barnwell. And Barnwell tried to tuck it away before it got there. He was hit by Terry Taylor, and I'm sure that he heard Terry Taylor coming. thing you don't really like to see. Did, did you see, uh, when we look at Bar uh, Barnwell now, this is a little outside. The ball was a little bit behind him, but not much at all. You know, that's right behind him. He hit him on the right wrong on shoulder. The shoulder. Well, you know, the Raiders' philosophy is you don't anticipate the pass. You don't throw it before the guy breaks. They like their quarterbacks to wait till the receiver breaks before they throw the ball. So sometimes it may appear as if he's throwing the ball late. Third down and 11. Barnwell once again. Top of your screen. Cliff Branch is split to the left. Mark Wilson. In trouble. And Wilson uh, will get about five out of it. But it will bring up fourth down, and the Seattle defense is strong once again. Well, and that play is one of the play example of why they missed Jim Plunkett, because Plunkett has the ability to scramble and still look downfield. And if Mark Wilson would have looked downfield, he would have saw Cliff Branch working back to him wide open. He was wide open. Mark Wilson was very busy. Busy, busy. Scancy is back. Excuse me, excuse me, he says. Ken Easley was leading the AFC in punt returns. They uh, replaced him with Scancy this evening. Great guy. Looks for a corner kick, and he, he gets in that zone and stab. That's close, though. So the Raiders, with good field position, they had the football near their own 40-yard line. But they have to punt away, and Seattle gets it back at their own 20-yard line following the touchback. You better believe that both teams feature the defense. And, of course, for the Raiders' defense, second in the AFC, Seattle is fourth in the AFC. <laughs> is that a good one? Oh, there's Agnes and Archie. Some beautiful signs around here tonight. <laughs> they do love the Seahawks, don't they? Seahawks, first down and 10. The ball at their own 20-yard line. Zach Dixon, single setback. That's Largent moving in motion. Dixon. Dixon broke behind a block. Uh, Ron Esink, the left tackle, gets close to four yards. Moving out there, Rod Martin, who finally, really last year, was recognized for the kind of play that he's been providing in Raiders for the past five years, making his first Pro Bowl attempt. He has nine sacks coming in tonight, a pair of interceptions, but he was Mr. Everything a year ago. And he has been Mr. Everything on defense for this team for a number of years. He's led the team in, in tackles a number of times, and he's been voted most valuable defensive player, I think, three of the last four years. Second down and six, 24-yard line of Seattle. David Hughes joins Zach Dixon as a setback for Seattle. Look right there. All right. Oh, and Squireek was in there quickly. Alzado also there, but it was Jack Squireek who is filling in for a injured Matt Millen, the inside linebacker on the left side, who they say could go tonight if he had to. They would prefer that he did not. Matt Millen with a full groin muscle, and Jack Squireek makes a key sack. Well, you remember Seattle all the way to the 15-yard line. Remember old Jack Squireek from the Super Bowl last year? 
coming out of that uh, middle linebacker position, intercepting the Theismann pass, and turning Joe. that Super Bowl. I can't say he turned it around. He just about put it on ice for the Raiders. He did run a good route, though. You'll have to give him yeah. credit for that. Four wide receivers now from Seattle. Largen is in there, of course. Darrell Turner, the rookie from Michigan State. Chris Castor and Brian Walker. And Seattle will go from the shotgun. Turner, the speedster, in motion. Craig. Uh, and again, pressure, trying to get it to Steve Largent. Lester Hayes was whipping most of the way, and Craig, who is ever so careful back there, he won't put it up for grabs very often. Overthrows, it'll be fourth down. And once again, Pruitt will settle in close to midfield, awaiting the punt of Jeff West. Jeff is an interesting punter. He doesn't kick it all that deep. We've talked about how he gets it high, but he has not had a punt block since 1978. Nearly 400 punting attempts. That's the look from Jeff West. And again, high, and it hangs. This time, Pruitt does not call for the fair catch. And the pursuit is down there, and Pruitt maybe got a couple out of it. Nevertheless, good field position for the Raiders. 44-yard punt that time for Jeff West, much more than his average. Uh, next week, we are going to be in New Orleans, and that should be a good one. The Pittsburgh Steelers really toughening up. They go against the New Orleans Saints. Both, of course, still alive in their divisional races, and, of course, wild card consideration, and then... We will move on from there to watch the Jets go against Miami, and Miami just keeps doing it somehow. We got away from Philadelphia yesterday, came back to win that with a block conversion. We'll see him on our last Monday night, too, against the Dallas Cowboys. At the 42-yard line, first and 10, Marcus Allen looks back inside, goes against the grain, and he is hammered. Jacob Green leading the assault by the Seahawks. We talked earlier when the Raiders had the ball, they were running the ball, and I said that they... They, they're more suited to run power plays, you know, one-on-one -on -one blocking like the Redskins. That's the type of play right there, the counter-type plays that they don't run well. It's one of the reasons Marcus Allen is not up there with Eric Dickinson or, or Walter Payton in rushing, because they just don't have the quickness in their guards to run that type of play. Ah, that's it. Second down and nine. Seahawks have brought in seven defensive backs. Mark Wilson... And Wilson gets inside Seahawk territory, does not pick up the first down. It'll be third down and one, but Wilson, again, being hassled and harried back there in the pocket. That's one of the things that happens, I think, to quarterback. He only had two receivers really downfield that time. And if those two guys are covered, you don't have many other choices. So to Mark's credit or defense that time, he didn't have very many places to go. His backs didn't seem to get in the pattern that time. What well, OJ John touched on a while ago is certainly true, though. Jim Pluckett doesn't have the arm of Mark Wilson, but he has the head, the savvy, the experience, and he can move around back there. Rather than running the football, he'll move around and find the open receiver. Third down and one. Marcus Allen, oh, and he almost breaks it. He gets the first down close to the 35-yard line in the arms of Dave Brown. 13-yard pickup, and it's so easy to do on third and short because everyone is up there so close. And they're running a straight power play. You'll see number 87, a flash from the pass. Dave Casper get a pretty good block over here. Marcus steps through. A good job by Dave Brown coming up to make the tackle one-on-one. -on -one. Got a good lead block from Frank Hawkins. Got a good block from Derek Jensen, who is the third tight end. The Raiders like to bring in on short yardage. Still no score. Two minutes and nine seconds remaining in the first quarter, and the clock is moving. Wilson, Marcus Allen. And the surge of the line carries Marcus Allen close to the 31-yard line. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. And one of your old teammates, there he is. Red. Real good ones. Hey, looking a little older than his true years. Reggie's only about 34, but he's had a lot of problems with his shoulder and his knee, and he was pressed into service here tonight. He hasn't been starting this year, but he's starting tonight, and he has his hands filled because I saw him trying to uh, block Bill Patel a few times, and Patel got near the quarterback. Second down and seven. Oops. Well, did the Raiders draw them off? Flags are everywhere. Looked like Henry moved a little bit quickly, a little too quickly. False start, number 70, five yards. Henry Lawrence on the right side. You saw it. That will stretch it out. Henry's not pleased with that. He says, 
<laughs> Who called that on me? This is 122nd game that he's played in for the Raiders. Very durable, but the rest of that line has been changed around. We told you about Mose Barr being injured in practice. Mickey Marvin is there. Charlie Hammond's on the bench. Kurt Marsh is there, and Shelby Jordan is a left tackle. Second and 12. Kenny King. Bruce Schultz defensively there for Seattle, and that was a surprising call. Trying to catch the Seahawks, thinking blitz perhaps on the pass, trying to get King outside. Seahawks didn't go with it. Tell you, number, third down and 10. Number 56, Greg Gaines, did an excellent job on Marcus. Marcus went out and blocked, and Marcus was telling me a story about the last time he played against Gaines, number 56, that he was surprised how hard and strong the guy is. He came in easy a few times, and one time he came in and almost knocked him out. <laughs> Third down and 10, top of your screen, both wide receivers. Malcolm Barmore, number 80, Cliff Branch, number 21. Listen to this crowd. Wilson, he Barnwell was. is there. He was. And again, Wilson didn't hang it up. Terry Taylor, the number one draft pick for Seattle out of Southern Illinois, was with Barnwell. Barnwell had him beat, though, and had Wilson put it up. Barnwell has the speed to run under it. So maybe that thumb is bothering Mark Wilson. But Barnwell has him beat relatively early. And with Barnwell's speed, if the ball would have been laid out there, you would have seen him pull away from Taylor maybe three or four yards, but he had to slow up for the ball. You're looking at a guy, Malcolm Barnwell, who has the most 40 yards or more receptions this year, and he has six of them. Out of range of Chris Barr. So Ray Guy will punt. Scancy is back guessing with him. Guy looks for the left corner. Puts it up high. And it's going to be oh, the yeah. six-yard line. Ray Guy, one of the all-time greats, uh, number one draft pick so many years ago, back in 1973. And so much on the line tonight for both of these ball clubs. Let's take a look at the AFC playoff picture. Those are the leaders in the division. Oh. Miami, 11-0. Pittsburgh, 6-5. They're leading the Central. Denver, of course, 10-1. They're in the AFC West, as is the Seattle and the Raiders. And the other contenders, there's how they stand. That after 11 games in the American Football Conference. Well, the game plan thus far, I think, is well field position. is working in the Ra Raiders' favor. They like to throw the ball deep to loosen up that secondary for the second half, and I think they are succeeding because they're beating them deep. They're going to have to start thinking about that. They played this entire first quarter in Seahawk territory. David Hughes. And Hughes bangs his way out to the 10. He'll get four. It'll be second down and six as we are in the final 30 seconds of the first quarter. Bitterly fought game, as they have always provided. Last year, even though the Raiders went on to win the Super Bowl, it was Seattle who defeated them twice. And, of course, it was the Raiders prevailing in the AFC Championship game. They did it 30-14. A lot of bitter feelings between these two ball clubs. And we're going to get... The end of the first quarter, Dave Craig anticipating it. We'll move over and have a word with head coach Chuck Knox. And we'll be back in the Kingdom in just a moment. Well, nil all in the game that we've been waiting for. Seattle have a fantastic defensive pattern, and they'll be really relying on that tonight. The Los Angeles Raiders, one of the big sides that have been hit by injuries. And the fellow I really believe they're going to miss tonight is Jim Plunkett. He's cunning, he's got a good arm, and he really has that technique of getting out of trouble and getting the Raiders going. So far, it's been a pretty tough encounter, and that's just what the 60,000 fans expected when they turned out to the Kingdom tonight. What about those Raider Buster shirts? Somebody's made a big dollar around the Seattle area. It looks like shaving up to be the game we all thought it was going to be, and uh, this one could go right to the wire. Okay, it's time for the Johnny Walker Super Bowl Super Plays. Let's have a look at those right now. <laughs> Bad snap, and Jennings has to leap to the right. Hangs it up high. McLemore is contact. Oh. Steven McLemore hey. field the ball. Look out. <laughs> he did. That is amazing. Trouble. Look, uh, Irene. Uh, McLemore is going to take another good. one back. And one referee goes down. He was clipped, the referee. Clear. There it is. Oh. Picked off. Uh, Johnny Shell. No. It's... Uh, Johnny uh, Shell, uh, they uh, take uh, it all the way back. Got Munoz to beat. Didn't have to put much of a move on him. <laughs> I do not see flags. What a nice kick. Miller looks for a picket line. And again, he pops it open. Oh, he is. He is amazing. Oh, he is gone. Henry 
Ellard. If you like your old-fashioned rock and sock em defense, you're going to get it tonight. Both these teams really strong on defense. Seattle with a minus 13 passing. That, of course, reflects two sacks that the Raiders have applied to Dave Craig. As we begin the second quarter, it'll be the Seahawks ball deep in their own territory. They've been here pretty much throughout the entire evening. We still have no score. The ball is at the 10-yard line, second and six. Two tight ends now for Seattle. Charlie Young is there. Mike Tice, Young 87. He played for Chuck Knox when Chuck Knox was with the Rams. And Mike Tice, the former Maryland quarterback. There are the two tight ends in there for Seattle. Jack Dixon. Dixon. Boom. Gets away from one tackle. And there was Big Rod. And then McElroy was there to make the stop. He'll gain a yard out of that. It'll be third down and five. McElroy is the guy we saw go out earlier in the ball game. Obviously, he's he's better and he's back in there. But what's kind of amazing, you look at their defensive statistics, and McElroy, by actually a considerable margin, is the leading tackler for safety. He's a third-year guy out of Baylor. He comes in there and sticks his head in there a little bit too many times. Maybe that's what happened to him a while ago. Well, they're good, good player, though. It's for him to come up and make a lot of the tackles because they got Mike Haynes and Lester Hayes playing the corner. They can play one-on-one, -on -one, so they don't need much help. And we're going to have a timeout call. Timeout. Seattle. They had four wide receivers come in. Dave Craig looked it over. Figured he did not have enough time to get it off within the 30 seconds allotted. He used the timeout. We'll be back. Interesting graphic. Interesting. O.J. could play with those kind of snaps. <laughs> well, you talk, it you want to make a comeback? It Anything? doesn't upset Chuck Knox at all. His philosophy is conservative offense, rock em, sock em defense. Let's get field position and ball com, and, and maybe some turnovers. He hasn't had the field position, but he's certainly playing conservative offense. Third down and five. Saddle from the shotgun, just inside their 11-yard line. Here comes the pressure. Here's Craig. Oh, he had a fire. He had large and wide open. He had it large and wide open, and he also had enough open space in front of him to run for that first down. I kind of expected him to do that. He's the fourth leading ball carrier on the Seattle Seahawks team. He did. He, he has 137 Craig. yards rushing, so that'll tell you what the other three have been doing. Of course, again, they lost Kurt Warner in that opener, and one would have to wonder how Kurt would complement this defensive unit. You know, I was talking to Mike McCormick at lunch today, the GM here, and, and he was talking about Franco Harris coming. I said, I'm really sorry that Franco didn't work out for you. He said, you know, in so many ways, he really picked our ball club up because they were so down when Kurt Warner went out. And that's, that's not a bad thing to say, I guess. That's the look from Jeff West's hands. This time, his first bad kick of the night. And Greg Pruitt has time at the 45-yard line. Oh, again, those special units of Seattle. They played so well. That was Eric Lane, who ordinarily would start as a setback. He is the captain of the special teams, and they have been superb throughout this season. Characteristically, Raiders now with their best starting field position, 46-yard line of Seattle. We're in the early moments of the first quarter. No score. There's Mark Wilson, and I do believe that second quarter, rather, I do believe that Mark Wilson's thumb is bothering him. He is a superb passer, of course. They watched him here in high school. He went to Shorecrest High School right here in Seattle before matriculating to Brigham Young. He has a great arm, and he is on several occasions missed receivers tonight. And he's playing with a very sore thumb on that passing end. First down and 10, the Raiders. Hawkins. And Ooh. Hawkins banging inside the 40-yard line. He'll get eight out of that. It'll be second down and two. Keith Butler made the stop. At halftime, very interesting profile, and one of the Raiders involved in it. NFL bachelors, what is it like? It's kind of interesting. And then, of course, an interview with Mark Breland, who will begin his pro career Thursday night right on ABC, four other Olympians. So stick around. We'll join Jim Laffey in New York for those particular events. Second and two. Hawkins. Hawkins close to the first down. He'll have it near the 35-yard line. I was watching Marcus. He was trying to put his hand down. He didn't put it down. Normally, that would be an uh, illegal procedure. But, you know, you talk about bachelors, and Marcus is a part of that halftime show. He's a neighbor of mine in Brimwood, California, and believe me, is that's that, one bachelor that leads an interesting life. Is it active? <laughs> Chris Collinsworth is another one. I remember one time at the Superstars, we had Chris fill out some kind of questionnaire. One of his hobbies, he said, well, one of them is, is women, and then down in love, he says, do you have any other hobbies? He's a young girl. That's kind of chauvinist. Oh, I thought it was, too. 
First down and 10. The ball near the 35-yard line. The Raiders in possession. Got some like movement. There was no flag, and here's Marcus Allen. Good straight arm. Good move there. And a juke down the sidelines, and he turned a two-yard pickup into a five-yard pickup. Marcus Allen has been especially devastating to Seattle over his career. He has been really something special. A year ago in the AFC Championship game, he ran for 154 yards with moves like this. He's got one of the best stiff arms. He got those Popeye, you know, like Steve Garvey forearms and he lifts a little weight. He keeps a little barbells. He's always doing push-ups in between sets of tennis. He's doing push-ups to develop that stiff arm. Wilson passing one of five, five yards. He looks over a second down and five. Looking for Barnwell. He's there. Oh, right. Defensively was Keith Simpson. Oh, was that a good job by Simpson? He was one of three of the Seahawks who returned four touchdowns, a record 330 yards against Kansas City a week ago, and he was there that time against Barnwell. From up here, it looked like that Barnwell had it. You see that ball maybe had thrown a little bit back over his head. Had it not been maybe a little bit more out in front of him, he would have been able to get there. We'll look at it from the other side. You'll see that Malcolm slows down a bit and starts moving back over his shoulder, but look at Simpson. Got that hand right there. Third down and five, and still Mark Wilson continues to go deep. We have not seen Todd Christensen with 50 receptions on the year. He likes to work to him underneath. We have not seen that much of Marcus Allen out of the backfield. Here comes Hawkins. He has the first down, still on his feet. And works his way down to the 16-yard line in the arms of John Harris, and the Raiders now prowling. That was the situation when Harris was faking a blitz that time, went up, and they snapped the ball, caught him in an awkward position. He ran into one of his own men, and he couldn't get out to pick up Hawkins. So it was one of those kind of mistakes that happened. I tell you, you wonder why the Raiders are throwing the ball so, uh, deep so often. Well, when you throw the ball deep that much, Don, as you know, the secondary is looking for help, and you get those linebackers trying to cover these backs, and uh, the Raiders are taking advantage of that now. First down and 10. The one they cannot cover is Marcus Allen coming out of the backfield. So effective. Hawkins over the left side. Allen with the lead block. And Hawkins inside the 15 to the 14. A gain of a couple. It'll bring up second down and eight. And Frank hit on the guy a while ago that I think we'll see down in here. That's Todd Christensen. He's the leading receiver on the team. One of the leading receivers in the league. And he has a great knack of just finding that open space. We were talking about it during a commercial a while ago, and that's where he and Plunkett have been so successful. Yeah, he's that. a great improvised pattern runner. When he's not open on his initial move, he can make adjustments, and Plunkett is uh, real adept at finding him. Yes, so Seattle has not given, given up a point now in 10 quarters. They've had two consecutive shutouts against San Diego, then Kansas City, and the opening game of the season. They shut out the Cleveland Browns. The Raiders are threatening that. Mark Wilson. And that will be the tight end, Todd Christensen. Where did Inside it go? Inside the five yard line, first down, goal to go. He also made that kind of little move. He turned back into the inside and just moved a little bit. Had some time to throw. It always kind of seems to start with that, doesn't it? Todd goes to the outside. He's got like man covers that Simpson again. Simpson, he comes back in, seemed to slide into the inside. Oh, but what yeah. a move, too, Don. He had the, yeah. He's a former running back. Second-round draft pick of Dallas a few years ago. They let him go after one year of injury reserve. The Giants let him go. Typically of the Raiders, they brought him out, looked him over, made him a tight end. He didn't do nothing until his second year. And last year, he led the entire NFL in reception. The Raiders now first down goal to go. Jensen in motion. He'll be a lead blocker. All right. And that was Todd Christensen again. And Kenny Easley... One of the best was right there. And Todd Christensen is saying to the referee, hey, what about face guarding? What is this stuff? And this interference comes back across. Look at it again. He's got easily right behind him. Easily. As long as he doesn't wave those arms, he's all right. Beautiful play. That was really well done, wasn't it? Kenny Easley was another member of that Seattle secondary that took a touchdown interception back against Kansas City. Dave Brown got the other two. Second down, goal to goal. Mark Wilson looking it over. Hawkins to the one-yard line. Frank Hawkins, not tall, 5'9", 210 pounds. A 10th round draft pick in 81 after a remarkable record of gaining over 5,000 yards at the University of Nevada at Reno. They thought he was too short. The Raiders found a way to use him. He is very effective down close. 
Why do you have a feeling that they're going to call air traffic control right now? Air traffic. One Marcus Allen is going to take off. You think he might? A little airborne, I Hold believe. Back. Third down, goal to go. No. There he is. And Allen started to go up. There was penetration, kept his feet into the end zone, and the string of unscored upon quarters for Seattle has ended. And that puts Marcus in the lead with touchdowns in the NFL. Well, it was working against, obviously, it was working against Seattle because you play field position. That's a game within the game. Every time you punt the ball, you want to get it back. As you see Marcus go over, steps over, goes into the end zone, and each time the Raiders punted the ball, they got the ball back in better field position than when they punted it. Good effort by Kurt Marsh and Shelby Jordan on that left side, leading the way for Marcus Allen. Here's Chris Barr for the conversion. And the Raiders are on top. They lead 7 to nothing. 9.49 remaining in the first half. Good football game. A defensive game. Marcus <laughs> Allen's 39th touchdown in his 36th professional game has put the Raiders on top 7 to nothing. Really one of the great football players. He can do so many things for you. There is Zach Dixon, number 31. You got to look at David Hughes, number 46. And Chris Barr will kick off. crowd here for a moment. Barr carries it to the goal line where David Hughes will bring it up. And there was a mix up between Hughes and Dixon and Hughes took it with the momentum carrying him backwards and that made the effort at a return very difficult. I look at the scoring drive and they just kept giving the Raiders field position. They couldn't get anything happening and the Raiders finally took it at their own 46 yard line and worked it into the end zone. Good hard hitting game once again the Raiders seven and three they feel they must win this game tonight and if they do so they'll move into a tie with Seattle and then Seattle and the Raiders will both be trailing Denver by two games and keep in mind Seattle is the master of their own destiny because they still have to play Denver twice in this AFC West. At the 15 yard line, first and 10. Craig is back. Gets it to David Hughes. And Hughes with a good move out over the 20 yard line before he's upended by Bob Nelson. That'll bring up a second down at four, and we'll pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. We've been watching a bitterly fought defensive game between the Raiders and the Seahawks, both trying to stay close to Denver in the AFC West. The Raiders finally have capitalized on a 46-yard drive a few moments ago. Second down and four for Dave Craig. This is Randall Morris, the rookie out of Tennessee, and he has piled up out of the 25-yard line. And he had to get just out over the 25 for the first down. It's going to be very close. That's what's transpired as far as the Seahawks' possessions are concerned. Unable to deal with a tough Raider defense. And the youngster out of Tennessee is short of the first down. It'll be third down in less than a yard. Boy, it's getting heated out there. I saw Lyle Alzado have a few words with someone. <laughs> My man Reggie McKenzie, the enforcer we used to call him, was over there calming him down a little bit. About a foot to go for the first down. Oh, nice. oh wow. They made him mad. That was Lyle Alzado colliding with David Hughes, and there'll be no first down. They, well, they say Lyle don't dominate a game for the entire game the way he once could, but they say on some plays he can totally take his side of the line away from an offense, and you saw him do it on that play. He just came screaming down the line of scrimmage. They made him mad to play before. Is that what you say about him? Way to go, Lyle. A football fan would love, any football coach would love to see this. Played off the block, and he made him head on, didn't he? <laughs> so many great years at Denver. Then, of course, three years with the Cleveland Browns, finally coming to the Raiders in 1982. Thought he was going to retire last year. Said he was. Changed his mind as we look at Jeff West set to punt once again for Seattle. Another high towering kick. 
Greg Pruitt at the 31 yard line. He didn't even hesitate. He called for the fair catch right at the very height of that football, which was far over our heads, and we're on the third level of the Kingdom here in Seattle. And that's where we're bringing you tonight's football game between Seattle and the Raiders. And we're pulling for it to hold up there. How important yes. it was to the Raiders, a win tonight for Seattle. That'd be one game out behind Denver, and Seattle will have five games remaining, as will the Raiders, of course. But Seattle has two games with Denver, home and away, and then they have three more opponents. They're all under 500, Cincinnati, Detroit, and Kansas City. Next week, they'll be at Cincinnati. The Raiders have a first down and 10. The ball near the 32-yard line. Marcus Allen and Allen out of the 35 to the 37. He'll get four. It'll be second down and six. Reminding you once again, CFA action continuing this Saturday as big eight powers get together. Number one ranked Nebraska and sixth ranked Oklahoma meet in that all-time classic rivalry. Or you watch number 10 ranked Texas battle surprising TCU in a critical Southwest Conference showdown. So check your local listing for the game in your area on CFA College Football live at 3.30 Eastern. You'll see it right here on ABC. Raiders second and six. Wilson with a lot of time. The flag is down as Christensen is at midfield. It was interference either on Christensen or the defensive players because that's he had bumped into a couple of them when he came across. Shelton Robinson, the linebacker, was all over Christensen. And I believe it's going to be Robinson who will get the call. Christensen, he's a dangerous man to be covering with the linebacker. But I think it's a penalty that will not work against them because he caught the ball. And normally you'll give your player that, st that stat opposed to taking the penalty. Let him have it. Bigger game. Holding defense number 58 declined. Result of the play, first down. That's Bruce Schultz. Schultz and Robinson sandwiching Christensen at the line of scrimmage, and Schultz gets called for the holding. And the Raiders have a first down at midfield. Midway through the second quarter, Raiders have started to exert themselves offensively. Wilson again, pressure. Directing traffic. Christensen, he liked where he was. He did not move, and finally Wilson delivers, and it's another Raider first down. That's exactly right. Wilson was trying to have him to move. He said, I'm not going to move. I'm open, man. Yeah. Throw me the ball. Is that a guy? That's the face of a million sacks. Yes, sir. He found him a home, Benny Lyle. Well, you wondered why the Raiders were throwing those bombs earlier in the game. Well, it was to open up their short passing game, and it's wide open right now. Well, Alzado, he'll give it everything he got. He is the oldest defensive lineman starting in the NFL. He still plays like a kid. On first and ten, the Raiders are back. Marcus Allen with a good hand, reaches back, collects the ball, gets to the 32-yard line for a gain of four before Jeff Bryant takes him there. Hey, Marcus Allen adds another dimension to a football offense. He can do so many things. Just a little check off there. Wilson had it behind him. Kept his concentration. Got it in the hands. And they'll mark it inside the 32, so it's going to be second down and five. He is awfully good, Frank. He leads the AFC with 1,231 yards of that combined yardage and scrimmage. Grant's top of your screen. Allen once again. Beautiful run. Oh, yep. Beautiful running by Marcus <laughs> Allen. He'll have a Raider first down near the 25-yard line. Now, that was a play designed to go the other way, and Marcus saw immediately they were slanting that way, and he improvised on his own. He went just the opposite direction that he was uh, scheduled to go, and he made an excellent run out of it. He got old Jeff Brack kind of grabbing it air there, didn't he? Big defensive end made a little quick move to the inside. Well, because of these offensive linemen, their pass blockers are not the best. I mean, they're good run blockers, but this offensive scheme is not running. Marcus will never dominate as a runner, but he could be the first guy to get 1,000 yards receiving and rushing in one season. First and 10. Wilson. Oh, he had two guys open that time. He did. He had Cliff Branch crossed with Kenny King. They were both open, and Wilson overthrows King, and something has to be bothering Mark Wilson. He's a really a gifted passer, and he's having trouble being on target tonight, and has to be that sprained thumb. It was either that or the fact that we called a while ago they had a combined sacks on him last week against the Bears, and, you know, he went out of the game a couple of times. I think sometimes that happens to guys. You get a little bit kind of a jumpy act back there. Well, well that play uh, too. easily in his face. That's they right. were, uh, they had a safety blitz on, and he really didn't have much time. He has that right hand heavily taped, and that has got to bother a passer. Second and ten. Draw play, Frank Hawkins. 
Hawkins nice just hurdles move. over one tackler down to the 15. Close to another first down. He should have it. Let's take a look at it. It's once again a little trap play, a tackle trap. Saw the tackle come by, make a nice block, and Hawkins does an excellent job of running the ball. Good one-on-one -on -one block by Dave Dalby against the nose tackle, Joe Nash. First down and 10, the ball at the 15-yard line. That's the tape I spoke of. It crisscrosses across the palm of the hand to protect the thumb. Wilson. Todd Christensen with a great catch. He has first down yardage. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Nice effort on Todd's part there, wasn't it, OJ? Made his little spin, picked up the extra couple of yards. Showed some courage, went up for the ball. A lot of times you don't want to go up over the middle. But bring it back. Holding penalty. Illegal motion. And it'll be brought back. Once again, our referee tonight, Jim Tunney. Illegal motion, 46. Down remains the same. It's only right that if you're going to have a pass taken away from you, it, you should be the cause of it. <laughs> he was in a hurry to get out there. What a great year Todd Christensen had last year, 92 receptions. He was a holdout during training camp. He came back, however, full speed. And he had 50 receptions coming into the night's game. Down remains the same as first and 15. Hawkins, left side. Loses the football, and there's a scramble. Seattle says they have it. A team that has lived on the turnovers. They need the entire NFL tied with Denver into the night with 44 such happenings. We told you about their 26 interceptions, their 18 fumble recoveries. And this time, the Raiders are turned away as Frank Hawkins coughs it up. The Seahawks. Before a delirious partisan crowd will have a first down and 10 at the Rams. And returned a interception against Kansas City, 76 yards last week. He's just picked up a Frank Hawkins fumble. And Seattle has the football back at the own 19-yard line. Listen to the crowd. Largent in motion. complete to Charlie Young and Young has first down yardage out over the 30 yard line. Charlie Young who has been much traveled Philadelphia where he was all pro in his early days and he played for Chuck Knox with the Rams and then of course was recently with the 49ers he is now back with Chuck Knox. Incredibly loyal is Chuck Knox. His assistant coaches have been with him all the way and they're good ones. Tom Catlin has done a great job as a defensive court coordinator. The offensive coordinator, Ray Prohaska. They've been with Chuck Knox through his 11 years of head coaching. From the 32 on first and 10. Craig winds up trying to get it to Largent. And there's a foot race back there. Van McElroy was just roaming the secondary, helping out Lester Hayes, and they play it so well. Hayes plays it. In short on the outside, reading it all the way, Van McElroy, the free safety, floating, floating until finally the ball is released. You know, it's really something when you think of the Seahawks' ability to constantly come up with the uh, turnover, turnover. You know, it's not by accident that it happens because Tom Catlin, the defensive coordinator who you just mentioned, he coaches it. He, they coach on their defense for the first guy to wrap around the guy and everybody else to go for the ball when they come from the top. Now, most teams will do that late in a football game if they're behind, but they coach it from the first quarter on, and that may be one of the reasons they have 45 takeaways. I guess that'd be one of them. Seattle has five yards passing. L.A., 60 yards. Quick snap on a second down and 10. The blitz is on, the flag is down. There was contact made, and the whistle's blew. Wow, Al Zato getting his hands on Dave Craig, and very kindly does not flop him down on this surface. Ball start, number 64. Down remains the same. Uh -oh. Ball start has got to be that the Raiders were showing that blitz early. They were jumping around Ron Esink over left tackle. Probably figured he did not have the right angle. He moved a little quickly. And Seattle will be backed up five. Yeah, they call that intimidation, especially a good blitzing team will 
will split. The down lineman will split to give those linebackers more room, and the defense offensive lineman is already in his stance, and there's nothing he can do. And he knows if he doesn't get over there quick, he's going to get beat on the first step. Four wide receivers, and we'll look at it from the end zone. A good shot. Watch how that secondary starts to move. And coming back. Okay, they drop it. Look, go oh, oh. goes down once again, and it was Howie Long this time, who's not having the great year he had a year ago, but this is one of the strongest cats around. He really is. He can move quickly, and he is powerful. Well, Big Howie has been getting double teamed a lot. He did a real nice trick here. He was up against Reggie McKenzie. He pushed him back a little ways. Then he went outside as uh, the defensive end, Lyle Alzado, was coming inside, picked Reggie off, and he was wide open. Raiders nice moved those play. men around so much. You'd ordinarily find Howie Long on the left side. That time he was over on the right side. The loss is all the way back inside the 20-yard line. It'll be third down and 23. Third sack now by the Raiders against Dave Craig. We'll watch it again from the end zone. This is when that defensive line really puts the ears back, and they'll come at Craig. Craig, no deep receiver, gets it to Dornick. Hey, and down goes Dornick, far short of first down yardage, but getting a little breathing room out close to the 30, and out comes the punting unit, Mike Davis, with a good tackle on Dan Dornick. Oh, Dan Dornick, you catch that little swing pass, and you know you got about 20 yards to get to the first down. It's like a picket fence. You see eight defenders coming at you, and you start throwing every move you got, you know? <laughs> you may be one of them, but it's rare you're going to beat the eight of them. Making up some moves. <laughs> Jeff West is getting a lot of business tonight. Seattle unable to fathom the Raider defense. 2.45, and the clock is moving, remaining in the first half. His sixth front of the night, Jeff West. Greg Pruitt will have time at the 32. Finds a little bit of that picket line, and he's out close to the 40-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 Raiders, with 2.31 remaining in the first half. Those diamond sweaters will be coming back, OJ. <laughs> well, look how they pick on me. You see my TV screen, they get the big screen, I get this little thing. Black and white, too. <laughs> you don't look at it anyway, so what are you talking about? No, that's good. Did you get this as part of your package when you went to USC? <laughs> Look out. I like it. Set to go. The Raiders first down and 10. The ball just inside their 40-yard line. They have averaged the starting position on their possessions at the 39-yard line as Marcus Allen keeps the pass rush honest over on the left side. Gets a couple of yards out of it. It'll be second down and eight. And then comes the specialty pass defenders for Seattle. And... Seconds are ticking off towards the two-minute warning. And they're going to let it tick off. Marcus Allen, those have been bitter yards. Two strong defensive teams, both trying to stay close to Denver in the AFC West. Seattle, 8-2. The Raiders, 7-3. Denver is on top. Denver has an incredible 10-1. Wilson tries to lay it up to Doki Williams, and Doki Williams well covered by another UCLA alumni, Kenny Easley. We remind you, halftime, we're going to be joining Jim Lampley in New York, and we're going to take a look at some of the interesting bachelors who have a very interesting life in the National Football League, and we are also going to be talking with Mark Breland, the gold medalist from the recently concluded Olympics. Marcus Allen is in that feature on Bachelors, by the way. Tom Cousineau. George Stark, the great Washington offensive lineman. And Mr. Ho-Ho himself, Chris Collinsworth. Third down and eight. 154 remaining. The Raiders have three timeouts. Blitz is on. Mark Wilson reads it, gets it to Cliff Brass, but he's buried at the 47, short of the first down. Kenny Easley defensively along with John Harris. So Seattle will get the ball back. Seconds are ticking off, and the Raiders will tick it down as much as they can. Keep in mind, Seattle used one of their timeouts. Dave Craig, tentative. When four receivers came into the game, he didn't want to make a mistake down near his goal line, so he called timeout. Paul Scancy, back around the 10-yard line. This will be the first time Ray Guy has been able to kick away. He's watching that clock. He'll snap his fingers to get the snap, and we're down to three seconds. He'll bring it now. Used everything he could. 
Not a good kick. Scancy at the 17, and he gets out of bounds up near the 25-yard line. Hustling down there was Stacy Tarrin, the rookie from Notre Dame. We have 55 seconds remaining in the first half. Seattle is down 7 to nothing in a bitterly cold weather. Seattle lost 30-14. They have not got beyond their own 36-yard line tonight. Here in the first half with 55 seconds remaining. Chuck Knox says and readily admits, he says, hey, we just got to get our offensive team playing. He's got Rusty Tillman with the special teams, and he's got his defense playing so well. The offense just really hasn't been performing too well. I bet in halftime he will not feel too bad. He will not get on the team. He'll, they feel they're right in the middle of this game. This is his type of football game, a one-touchdown game. Well, they sure are. First and ten, the ball just inside Seattle's 25-yard line, and they open right out of the shotgun. But unable to get there was Mike Davis in and out of the hands of Daryl Turner. Had a little much, little too much steam on it. I agree. That is really uncharacteristic of Dave Craig. He has a great touch. Well, that's well, isn't it? Didn't you say earlier the largest single support? Is that the re is that no. reverse angles going crazy? <laughs> no. Say that again, Frank. I mean, the largest single concrete that is structure. Nice. Singularly Hill is something. Well, we'll get it back up there again. <laughs> Craig, thus far in the first half, 4 of 10, 34 yards. He looks over, a second down and 10 from the shotgun. Craig. Flag is down, trying to get it to Brian Walker incomplete. Well, it's not a flag either. It was an arm wrap that came off one of the players. He also lost his shoe. That was Mike Davis, deep downfield. Third down and 10. Got a lot of Euchres here tonight. Crowd has really been turned on. They've written songs about the Seahawks team. They've been playing them constantly. Thousands of people are here in T-shirts that say Raider Busters. But thus far, the bulk of the busting has been done by the Raiders. From this angle, you have a chance to see what kind of zones are open back there. That's basically zone defense. See where he's got his pass patterns going, and hey, that's just right up the middle. Dan Dornick short of the first down, out of the 31-yard line. Short by about three in the arms of Howie Long. 38 seconds. Will the Raiders stop the clock? I believe they will. Timeout is called by the Raiders. Let's go quickly to Jim Lampley in New York. Good evening, Frank. The NFC showdown took place in Bush Memorial Stadium in St. Louis. Gary Hogaboom back as the starting quarterback for Dallas, but this touchdown pass to Springs, which led to the victory, one of only a few big plays for the Cowboy offense. Much credit for the victory to the Dallas defense, which forced six turnovers, sacked Neil Lomax five times, and now with Dallas tied with Washington, the NFC East has a look more in keeping with its recent history. Denver against San Diego. The Broncos continue to show that they have the confidence to win. This Elway fastball to Ray Alexander set up Sammy Winder's winning touchdown run with just 38 seconds left in the game. Alexander bobbled the ball but was able to hold on. Keys to the game, another control game for Elway, no interceptions, and San Diego, 13 penalties. Back to you, Frank. And Jeff West is on punt once again, deep as Greg's foot. Yes. His second punt of the night, and whistle blow and flags fly. That should be a first down for the that Seahawks. That should be first down yardage if they mark it off against the Raiders. I thought I saw a little movement over that offensive line. Two opinions. One of them would be right. All start, offense. Five oh. yards. And that was picked up. It looked like the Raiders, and there was movement at the line of scrimmage, and now Jeff West will kick from five yards deeper. Rusty Tillman there you saw in front of Chuck Knox, and he's the defensive special team of the special teams coach. He was a great special teams performer for the Washington Redskins in his career. There he was. And he has the best special teams in football here in Seattle. They okay. really work at it. Here's Def West. 37 seconds remaining. The Raiders use one of their three timeouts. They want to get the ball back and see if they can do something with it. Dowering punt once again by West. Greg Pruitt from the 30-yard line had already indicated the fair catch at the very height of that ball. He knew he would have no opportunity. 
And it could be those eight fumbles that Greg Pruitt has come up with are bothering just a little bit. Nice. I'd like to see that. Good luck, Franco, from me, too. Oh, they got great fans up here. Really do. I mentioned earlier, but one of the things that McCormick was saying, he says that they really thought their whole season was gone because, they, you know, Warner had, had such a great year a year ago. You know, even the expectation that Franco would get it together yeah. before the season was over, I think, helped his young football team. Raiders, leading 7 to nothing, have 30 seconds remaining in the first half. They have the ball near their own 30-yard line. They have two timeouts. But neither team has been dazzling offensively. Good defensive play that Mark Wilson, you have to wonder, he has been off tonight from what we have seen in the past. It could be that sprained thumb. Here comes Kenny King. And uh, Kenny King will get eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Oh, this is unlike, away. It's unlike the Raiders. Normally you would think the Raiders of all teams would try to get in field goal range with two timeouts. They're going to let it run down, and we'll remind you to stick around for halftime. We're going to take a look at some of the sporting bachelors in the NFL and also have a word with Mark Breland. Now, so much on the line. Seattle 8-2 and two in the AFC West. The Raiders are 7-3. and three. The Raiders with a win tonight. They draw even with Seattle. They will both be two games behind streaking Denver. Denver is 10-1. and one. Seattle will kick off. Norm Johnson will put it in play. Clee Montgomery, 28. Doki Williams, number 85. The speedster is back for the Raiders. Seattle struggling offensively against a very rugged Raider defense in the first half. Clee Montgomery deep in his end zone. And he pays the price at the 15-yard line. And once again, the hustling special teams of Seattle get the Raiders started deep in their own territory. Let's take a look at the stats in the first quarter. That minus 13 passing again reflects two sacks against quarterback Dave Craig. And we'll dissolve now and come up with the halftime numbers. Key thing is Seattle only averaged 1.7 yards per play in the first half. Seattle had only one first down in the second quarter. There's a penalty on the kickoff. Holding 54. Penalized from the end of the run. Half the distance of the goal line. First down. Darrell Bird holding, and the Raiders move even farther back, half the distance to the goal line. They mark it inside the eight yard line. Dave Casper comes into the lineup, number 87. He was activated before the Chicago game a week ago. He'd been with the Raiders after being released by Minnesota in training camp, but he had suffered a very severely sprained arch, and now he, they say anyway, he's ready to go. Memorable years for this veteran, not only with the Oakland Raiders, but with Houston. First down and 10 at the eight yard line. Kenny King, ball is loose. Seattle is saying they have it. No, it's covered by the Raiders, and I believe it was Dave Casper. I think Casper fell right on it. And he didn't really attend to that. The ball just jumped out, looked like. Well, something was up because the Raider coaches were trying to signal the timeout. As you can see, you see Kenny gets outside. It's maybe should have gone up there. As I say, the first man is, as you can see, you saw easily go after the hey. ball. The first man tackles the runner. The next guys are trying to get the ball. Now watch number 45, Kenny Easley. It'll be as 56 you can see, great games on the stop. You hit it, Not OJ. Easley. easily goes for the ball. And I believe they got the look that ball's on the inside of the, of the well, it looked like to me that shot before that it was on the inside of the playing field. Casper made the recovery right at the line of scrimmage. And Again, I did not see a flag. I guess it was far across the field, but apparently the options are being discussed with Seattle. Here's our referee, Jim Tunney. Illegal formation, no end of the line of scrimmage. Penalty is declined. Second out. <laughs> that was probably Casper, too, wasn't it? Well, he was out there hovering around for a fumble. <laughs> they stopped Kenny King at the line of scrimmage. They declined the penalty. It's second down and 10. Kenny King again. And Kenny King is really hammered. Hit hard by Jacob Green. He got to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. That's the first individual call Jacob's gotten tonight, but he's the guy we mentioned at the top of the show that leads the team in quarterback sacks. But that's something else, too, that the Raiders also know. And I've been watching. They, they try to have at least two guys pay a little bit of attention to Jacob. He can make a difference. They've got one guy that's pretty good on him, Henry Lawrence. That's true. 
Wilson in the first half. 7 of 15, 66 yards. He does not throw tonight like the Wilson that we have seen so many times. He has a badly sprained thumb wearing tape on it as Marcus Allen. Oh, oh. That's right, and Allen fumbles. It could be there was a scramble for it. John Harris provided the hit on Allen. <laughs> I'd like to be at the bottom of that. I wouldn't even want to be close. Lucky to come away with your socks. You see Casper reach in there and pull. pull. I don't know who it looked like Tyson or somebody pulled off of him. Well, you know the guy who's pumping the, mo the most weights. Seattle. He's going to get the ball. Seattle. Down 7 to nothing. This is their second turnover. They have not turned the ball over themselves. That's their 46th turnover of the year. They live by it. You see, Mark, it's a play was designed to go outside. He knows he needs a few yards for the first down, about eight. He's cutting back, almost runs into Hawkins. He's hit by Kenny Easley once again. And as you can see, number 44 there trying to slap the ball away. And they come up with their 46th takeaway. And they have the ball at the 13-yard line, first down and 10. They trail 7 to nothing. Offensively, they have been struggling. It was Harris who came up with the recovery. But in the first half, Craig was 4 of 11 for 34 yards. Great defensive play by the Raiders in the first half. Randall Morris, a rookie from Tennessee, and he gets inside the 10-yard line. He'll get three yards. It'll be second down and seven. That's the big fella right there, Sheldon Robinson, that covered that ball. You saw Harris, 44, that pulled it out. I, you know, O.J., what, until you mentioned it, I never heard of that before. They went up and go for it, but I've been watching. They've been doing that. Yeah, Tom Catlin, he's been around. He's been a great defensive coach for a number of years for George Allen down in L.A. with the Rams, of course, with Chuck Knox there and in Buffalo and now up here. He's done an excellent job. Second down and call it six as it's marked near the nine-yard line. Morris again, the rookie from Tennessee, and he is piled up. Hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll squeeze a yard of it. And it's going to be third down and five. And Chuck Knox trying to move the ball on the ground. Well, let me tell you, they're running the ball because I think they're just playing it a little safe, but Coach Meredith, what? I would keep my eye on number 80, Steve Largent, right now. He's the man for this Seahawks team whenever they get in, uh, into this type of situation. And I'm sure Dave Craig has, has a play designed to try to hit Steve Largent. Largent in the slot. Now he is on the move. He wears number 80. Dave Craig. And Lester Hayes was raining all over Steve Largent. He took him on an out move. He took him back in over the middle. And so out will come the field goal unit. Let's watch a great defensive play by Lester Hayes. He okay. just was glued to Largent. Well, if O.J. knew they were going to throw a Largent, okay. don't you think Lester knew they were going to also? No, he, he was really on him, isn't he? Yeah, well, Lester was supposed to fall for that out move, but Lester didn't. You know what he does? He's so well. Lester Hayes looks at the eyes of a defender. He is playing the defender. When that defender receiver looks for the ball brings those hands up then lester hayes replays the ball norm johnson 15 of 17 on the year on for the field goal attempt of 27 yards jim zorn the backup quarterback will place it down seattle gets on the scoreboard here in the early moments of the third quarter following the turnover there is lester hayes one of the finest, if not the finest, that's ever played that spot. And on Monday night, that's not bad, unless you're a Raider, and they are 21-2-1 and one on Monday night. Boy, so many memorable games with these Raiders. Well, that one loss that Seattle has is to the Raiders. Norm Johnson to kick off. Clee Montgomery is deep along with Doki Williams. Johnson hangs it high. Gotta let the coverage get deep downfield. Here comes Doki Williams. Oh! Ah. Williams is flat. Oh, my aching back. Recently Young. activated Don Kupak. It should be a law against Freddie that. Young, the man they told us about. He is really something on special teams. Out of New Mexico State, a rookie. He's got to be a rookie. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness, a lot. When they get to the second year. And you got you mentioned Don Dupac, number 35, you see coming in there, too. Is what activated today. Whoa! Life, what a hit. That was Dufak underneath yeah. and Young on top. He got it. Dufak has been cut by the Seahawks five times. He keeps coming back. They keep getting him back in there. 
They want a guy. Injured reserve today. First down and 10. The ball out of the Raiders 15 yard line. Powerful hitting here tonight. Wilson checks off. Marcus Allen. Good defensive play. Keith Simpson. Had about a seven yard sprint to get to Allen, one of the great open field runners, and he made the tackle. Now, if I was uh, in charge of the wave juice, I would have it flowing right now because you can kind of sense the momentum shifting a little bit. And they say it bothers on the, that offensive team. Is this when they'd get up and do it? Yeah, I think they would. The Raiders wouldn't be able to hear the count. And they certainly wouldn't be able to hear any audible that Wilson may want to call. Second Here down, 10. At the 17 yard line. Hawkins. And Hawkins uh, hammered right at the line of scrimmage. And he almost lost that one again. Joe Nash and Jacob Green. That's a lot of defense. Give him a yard, a yard and a half on that, but it's still <laughs> third down and long. And there are those Raider Busters t-shirts that I spoke of earlier. And that's exactly what the Seahawks are doing right now, busting up some Raiders. 40,000 of those t-shirts were sold in the Seattle area. And there goes the wave. Kind of a twinkling of a wave. Mark Wilson, you have to suspect, as we watched him in the first half, that screen time has been bothering him. Trying to get it to Marcus Allen. He was well covered. Keith Simpson was there. Also linebacker, Fred Young. They're going to hear a lot about Fred Young. You hit the, get the feeling. Great speed. They're with you out of New Mexico State. Crowd loves it. And Ray Guy comes on to punt for the Raiders. Paul Scancy drops back. Scancy going tonight. Instead of Kenny Easley, who replaced Paul Jones, who was injured earlier in the year, and Kenny Easley came into the night leading the AFC in return. But tonight, Seattle chooses to go with Scancy, former Pittsburgh Steeler. Ray Guy gets a beauty. Scancy driven all the way back inside his 25 yard line. And works out over the 35 to the 36. Seattle will have a first down and 10. I talked about the excitement, the energy that you can feel in this city over the Seattle Seahawks team. They've done a lot of things and they've written a song. Uh, local station KUBE put it on the air. It's called Raider Busters. Let's hear a little bit of it. When things get tough for old Chuck Knox, <laughs> who's he going to call? Raider Busters! Because <laughs> the Raiders are coming to play the Hawks. Who should he call? Raider Busters! They've had a lot of fun up here, but there are some pretty bitter feelings. And it's been very interesting, this series between Seattle and the Raiders. Last year, the Raiders were 12 and 4. Two of those losses were to Seattle. Then, of course, they beat them in the AFC Championship. The Raiders prevailing there 30-14. On first and 10 for Seattle. Dave Craig has it batted away. Boy, he had Charlie Young wide open in the middle there. Yes, somebody missed their man. I see Rod Martin is pointing to Charles Young, telling one of his teammates that was your man. Dave Craig is smiling. He smacked his fist into his hand. He saw what you saw, Don, O.J. Charlie Young was wide open. He saw his completion percentage, and, you know, Dave is certainly a fine young quarterback. I think coming into this week's game, he was like fourth in the league, fourth rated in the, at least in the American Football Conference. But against the Raiders, he's never completed 50% of his passes. He had a quick look at Jim Plunkett. Could be ready to go tonight if they needed him. Activated, injured five weeks ago, and a domino muscle tear in a game that the Raiders won against Seattle, 28-14. This is their second meeting. Second and 10. The blitz is on. Craig somehow gets away from it. A safety blitz was on. Craig dies for the first down. That could spark this ball club. You bet it could. Mike Davis was on a safety blitz, and somehow Craig got away from the sure-footed Mike Davis. As you can see, Davis is coming from the left side of your screen. Reggie McKenzie goes over, put a pretty nice block on him, but by doing that, he opened it up for Howie Long, who Craig was able to avoid and hustle downfield and get the first down. Craig, out to the 47-yard line. The longest run from scrimmage tonight. That was 12 yards. It's been tough defensive play. Look at those offensive linemen set. This is going to be a pass. Now he 
Bob's changing off, too. That was Bob Kreider, the right tackle, coming down the line of scrimmage. Had great years in New England. Ball start, number 78, five yards, down remains the same. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves as they mark it off. Bitterly fought, important game in the AFC West. Seattle eight and two, the Raiders are seven three, trying to stay with Denver at 10 and one. Defensive game in the first half, Los Angeles with one sustained drive, getting seven points, they moved 46 yards for that. The Seattle Seahawks got a turnover early in the third quarter. They got a 27 yard field goal from Norm Johnson. That's the score, seven to three, the Raiders over the Seahawks. First down, 15. Craig again getting out of trouble. And Craig again picking up yardage back to the original line of scrimmage or close to it as he's chased out of bounds by Otis McKinney. Big Howie Long is so close and yet so far away. You mentioned earlier, Frank, he's not having the year he had last year. I think he's still playing good ball. He's just getting double and triple team, and that's twice he was within a, oh, a foot of sacking Craig, and he just couldn't quite get there. Oh, I think he's one of the truly great ones coming on, but he, is, he got a lot of people's attention a year ago. He got Craig's attention the last two plays, too. <laughs> he went for 13 sacks a year ago, went to the Pro Bowl out of Villanova. Big number 75. Both quarterbacks thus far tonight have one receiver, a one completion to a wide receiver. So that kind of game. Second and 11 from the shotgun. Craig gets it to number 81. Daryl Turner, he's got a lot of speed. And he's hammered down, hit by Otis McKinney, but Daryl Turner, the rookie from Michigan State, with a 44-yard pickup. It'll be first down at the 10-yard line, Seattle. And the good thing that Daryl Turner did on this play, he never gave Lester Hayes an indication that the ball was coming. Watch this. Lester normally could have still taken a shot at the ball, but he never gave an indication that the ball was coming, and Lester never knew when to react to the ball. What did Chuck Knox say about him when the... We're in San Diego two weeks ago. He's deceptively fast. Had a great career at Michigan. 78 receptions. A second round draft pick. And he has just given Seattle an opportunity to take the lead in this game. They trail 7-3, 8-51. And the clock is moving here in the third quarter. This time he'll go down. The blitz was on. Bob Nelson was in there from linebacker and Bill Pickell, the nose tackle. I think that's one thing that happens to the quarterback when he has a little success running. He doesn't go back and set up. You see two guys pushing. That's got your old buddy Reggie out there. He's mad at somebody. <laughs> I thought he was fighting one of his own I, did too, there, I, saw I think it. they were trying to keep him away from the defense. Craig the was defense. able to squeeze back towards the line of scrimmage, so there was only a loss of two. It'll be second <laughs> down and 12, and we're seeing a lot of Piquel tonight because along with Matt Millen, the strong side linebacker, and a good one indeed, Reggie Kinlaw, who ordinarily would be in there, and there is Bill Piquel, is out with a groin pull, as is Matt Millen. There he goes. Second and 12. Craig is back. David Hughes, and he'll get about three yards out of him. Good play. It was Jeff Barnes, the linebacker on the left side, who was very close to Hughes all the way out of the backfield. Well, I think Reggie has gotten a little too excited. I saw him get sick there right before the ball was snapped. He's had a history of getting sick on a football field. Ahmad Rashad used to tease him because his weight is so low that he's always got to eat. He eats a lot of bacon the morning of a game, you know. No. Eat a big breakfast. I saw him get hold sick it, and he just it. left the football field, but he'll be back in there. Let's don't get too graphic. <laughs> Third down, goal to go. Reds, hang in there, old fella. Uh -huh. From the shotgun. And no, the Raiders want timeout. They looked at perhaps a different set. So the Raiders have expended a timeout. They could need line up. He's a little lighter, but he's back in there. <laughs> Yeah, well, Reggie, you know, he means a lot to this team. He was voted the most inspirational player by the guys. He came in, he started team meetings, and he really got this 
team, uh, thinking like a team, but he came into the league. He played with me at 233 pounds. That was a rather, you know, rather light for a lineman. So he has to eat a lot to keep that weight up. <laughs> I don't want to know what it is. No, it's all right. Third down, goal to go. Craig Dow here in that. the second half. Three of four for 47 yards in the entire first half. He was four of 11 for 34 yards. <laughs> go get him, Rich. From the shotgun, third and goal. Chris Castor in motion. comes down with it between two defenders. Great effort. Van McElroy was there. Lester Hayes was there. And Largent, one of the superb players. No, that is Brian Walker. Byron Walker. I thought it was, I thought it was Largent too. It looked like Largent. We've seen him do it so many times. Youngster out of Citadel. He has the hide. He's 6'4", but he makes a spectacular catch in between McElroy and Hayes. There's Hayes covering man for man. He'll get help from McElroy on the inside. Down he comes. That ball had to be there, didn't it? It's the only place that one could have been. Seattle moves out on top. Craig, 4-5 here in the second half. Norm Johnson for the conversion. Flag is down. You also saw Reggie come back and make a good block, as a matter of fact. Once again tonight, Jim Tunney. Relatively penalty free tonight. Five for point was successful. Offside defense being penalized on the kickoff. There he is, Byron Walker. Got it in on a third down and nine. He's 6'4, 190 pounds, and you're right, Don. Dave Craig had to have it right in there. You see right behind Craig, that was Reggie McKenzie that had a block in here. This kid almost drops the ball if you look at it from this angle. He had it once and the breach down, pulled it back in. Come back home, he says. Come back home. Lester Hayes had position. A great pass by Dave Craig. If you were with us earlier, Doki Williams ordinarily would be back. Greg Pruitt is in there. Doki Williams really hammered by Fred Young, the rookie from New Mexico State. He's getting a little R&R on &R the sidelines. Norm Johnson to kick off. Johnson, booming kick. It'll carry him to the end zone. And Greg Pruitt will watch it. He'll cover it. That ball is alive. So the Raiders, with momentum switching, will have a first down and 10 at their 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the scoring drive. For Seattle. Taking the ball with their own 37-yard line. That yellow is a penalty. That big, long black one was a... Nice pass completion over the middle. Actually, again, to the inside of Lester Hayes. The touchdown pass was inside of Lester Hayes and not really knowing the defensive coverage. Lester maybe should have had help from the inside on both those batters. Big play was a 44-yard pickup by the rookie from Michigan State, Darrell Turner. First down and 10. The ball at the 20-yard line. Mark Wilson back. Good protection. And Wilson gets the ball to Malcolm Barnwell. And they're disallowing that. The rule being that you would have to be able to come down inbounds with both feet. Barnwell, had he come down not being hit by the defender, no way he could have come down with both feet inbounds. Well, he has his man beat. Once again, it's a pass that's a little offline. I don't understand what Malcolm could have been debating. This is not the Mark Wilson we've watched before. Mark Wilson with a great arm. But again, he has that right thumb which was sprained a week ago against the Bears. Heavily taken. Second down and 10. Wilson flutters one out to Christensen. Incomplete. Hey, frankly, you have to admire his courage. I know that has to be hurting. I don't know what they've done to it, but a week ago against the Bears, he was knocked out of that game on a big day for Richard Dent of the Bears. The Bears applying nine sacks to the Raider quarterbacks. And... Then he was taken out of the game with a very severely sprained thumb. He was in being x-rayed when David Hume was on as the quarterback. He, David Hum, rather. And David Hum went out with an injury, and quickly it was Mark Wilson back into the lineup. Ray Guile had some nervous moments because he's the emergency quarterback, the punter for the Raiders. Third down and ten. Punt. 79 was there, Jacob Green, Jeff Bryant, 77, the two outside men. 
Mike Fanning, who comes in on the four-man down line. They were all there. They love it. They are aware of the standings in the AFC West. Denver on top, 10 to 1. A Raider lost tonight. They have dropped to 7 and 4. Seattle would go to 9 and 2, and they play Denver twice in the remaining five games. Ray Guy on the punt. Scancy is deep, awaiting Ray Guy's punt at the 40 yard line. Close. Scancy from his own 40. Flag is down, far upfield. Keith Simpson is saying, I did nothing. Otis McKinney is saying, yes, he did. It was fourth and 14. And Jim Tunney will sort it out. Well, this crowd is something. They just hold their breath between plays almost. Great sports fans up here. indicated against Seattle. Well, we mentioned there are games within games. Holding, full possession foul, number 96, 10 yards, first down. The holding took place after Scancy had fielded the ball. The supercharged kingdom in Seattle, Washington. All these fans seemingly dressed in white with those T-shirts that have been selling like hotcakes and say Raider Busters across the front. In the earlier game, five weeks ago, it was the Raiders who won the 28-14, and it was the Raiders in the AFC Championship game a year ago that won 30-14 over Seattle. Dave Craig has a hot hand here in the early going of the second half. The two possessions have resulted in a field goal and a touchdown. Dorney got the backfield. Good move by Dan Dorney. All right. Up close to a first down, he'll miss it by about a foot, I believe. Jack Squirek made the stop of the former Washington State star. Came to Seattle a couple of years ago. The defensive player out there was Bob Nelson. He'll <laughs> swing back out to the outside. Look for your man. Uh, here comes Dornick. Look at him to the inside. I think you're going to see Reggie show up right there. Well, you saw Robert there. Pratt, number 61, came up there and put a heck of a block on Bob Nelson. Reggie came up a little later on it. Short of the first down by less than a yard. Out over the 46-yard line. Darning again, and he bowls to midfield. He'll have the first down. I momentum saying, has definitely switched. I was saying before we went to commercial that there are games within games, and one game you play is a game of field position, and in the first half, the Raiders won that contest, and they were ahead in the football game, and here in the second half, it's been all Seahawks. They've had the ball around midfield on each punt, and they're ahead in the football game, 10-7. Right at the 49-yard line is the first down. Larson goes up to the top of your screen. To the right, Daryl Turner, the outstanding rookie from Michigan State. Those are the wide receivers. the arms of Charlie Young, and Charlie Young is down on the 20-yard line on a 30-yard pickup. But poised by Craig, under great pressure, and he had to throw it perfectly, Don. Look at Dan Dorning, number 33. He had a good pickup block on the other side. That was perfectly thrown. Right over the outstretched arms of Jack Squark. Certainly helps when you get this much time to throw the ball. You don't feel the pressure. Charles Young, once one of the great receivers in the game of football, when he was with Philadelphia, that was a lot of years ago, but he's had a good career all over the league. He went to the Super Bowl, obviously, with the 49ers, and that's probably the biggest play of the year he's had for this Seahawks team. The 15th reception for Charlie Young on the year, and that is the biggest. The drive is still alive. Craig, Turner, Daryl Turner with another spectacular catch. You see Lester Hayes talking to his inside help. Turner now has burned Hayes twice, 44 yards on the drive that led to a Seattle score. And now he hits from 20 yards out. 
Another well-thrown ball, O.J. He just rifled this ball. Look at that follow-through. Well, well, Lester's planning to the outside, he's, and after this play, he gives Baron McElroy a long look, and I think he did expect to get some inside help, but it was a perfectly thrown pass, and even if Van was alert to it, I don't know if he could have done anything about it. Darrell Turner has really taken up the slack for the loss of wide receiver Paul Johns. Norm Johnson on for the conversion. Saddle already leads 10 to 19, there it is, they make it 17. There he is, an outstanding rookie second round draft pick from Michigan State. We saw him in San Diego a couple of weeks ago. Looking good. The kickoff. And during the commercial, this crowd went absolutely bananas. T. Montgomery is back with Greg Pruitt. Seattle knows they can't count on the Raiders to quit. They don't know what it means to quit. They'll come roaring back. Here comes T. Montgomery. Boy, the special team and the Rusty Tillman, the coach, are really special here in Seattle. There was Don Dufek. Once again, activated today. Listen to this crowd. The Raiders have watched the momentum switch. They have really a first have. and ten at the 15-yard line. They need to get something going. Mark Wilson steps into the huddle. And the youngster from Michigan State, Darrell Turner, having a big night. And against the premier defensive back in football, Lester Hayes, who has given up a couple of touchdowns, given up a 44-yard pickup by Turner. Wilson under throws to Cliff Branch, but he was under pressure. It'll be second and ten. Once again, CFA action continuing this Saturday as the Big 8 powers get together. Number one, Nebraska, sixth ranked Oklahoma, and what a classic that'll be. Or you'll watch number ten ranked Texas get it on against the surprising TCU in a battle for Southwest Conference. Honors down there. The Check your local listings for the game in your area on CFA College Football live at 3.30 Eastern here on ABC. The dreaded frogs from Fort Worth have raised their hands. They're going after them this year down there. Second and ten, Wilson 0 for 5 here in the second half. Frank Hawkins. Good, hard, strong running. And that's what you get from Hawkins. He gets seven out of it. <laughs> Well, the pressure's on the Raiders' offensive unit. They've been pretty ineffective uh, in recent weeks. As a matter of fact, in the last eight regular season games that they've scored less than 20 points in, they have not won. And in the NFL today, I, I believe you gotta, you got to be averaging in the high 20s or mid-20s if you're going to be a winning football team. Offensive points, that is. That's right. Third down, a long two. A record crowd has been announced here in the Kingdom. 64,100, breaking the record set... Back in 83, when the Seahawks met the Dallas Cowboys. Wilson. Uh -huh. Barnwell, and he comes down with it. That was on a third down and three. Terry Taylor, the first round draft pick out of Southern Illinois. I'm sure not thinking deep, but again, Wilson got the completion. But had he just led Barnwell a little bit, it's six points. You got to give Malcolm Barn Barnwell all the credit here. The ball is thrown over his outside shoulder. He's running down the middle of the field. He makes a great adjustment there. He really and did. just to catch the ball falling away from it is it's an incredible catch on his part. And uh, especially when you consider the, the value of the catch at this point in the game. If, if nothing else, the Raiders will have field position for the rest of this quarter. You know, that's a young mistake by Turner, or Terry Taylor, the rookie from Southern Illinois. He had good, good position. He just didn't think that Wilson was going to hang it up there on a third down and a long two. The first down is at the 33-yard line of the uh, two-off. So in and out of the hands of Frank Hawkins. Too much on it. Maybe a little too picky or a little too critical, but again, that was an example. If Mark had laid the ball more out in the center of the field, I think Malcolm had the speed to adjust. He adjusted behind him. They wouldn't have touched him. He has that speed to go deep. I mentioned earlier in the game, he has already caught six passes this year over 40 yards. The thing about a sore thumb, everybody's played with him. I played with him, had one kind of cracked a little bit. You look at big Jacob Green, they, everybody knows he's there. <laughs> but that sore thumb actually could be getting a little bit more sore later in the game because he's been using it. And getting that snap from center, he's pounding right on that right hand. That was Jacob Green 
gesturing at Henry Lawrence, the man he's been working against all night. And it was not a friendly gesture. It's second down and ten. Baker Green almost got to Wilson, but Wilson is able to get it to Barnwell, and Barnwell will have first down yardage at the 20-yard line. Keith Simpson laying off Barnwell because of that great speed. Well, these Keith. guys are certainly taking some liberties with the Raiders. Historically, they're not a team that you point your finger to and argue at too, uh, too much. They're a little different Raider team. You know, when I played, they, they're a team that got a lot of penalties. Uh, mostly, be, mostly the aggressive kind. They always came out on the field and got a lot of unnecessary roughness. As you pointed out, it was surprising last week. They only had one penalty for five yards, and that's oh, uncharacteristic of a Raider team. That was in the first quarter. First and ten. Wilson oh. trying to get it to Barnwell. He is well covered by Dave Brown, and Dave Brown was getting help from John Harris at free safety. These safeties seem be having very little trouble in reading Wilson because I saw him get a real jump on him that time. The minute he looked over there, Harris came over, and it's a good thing the ball was thrown high. Otherwise, I'm, I think the uh, Seahawks would have had another turnover. You see that uh, number 21, Cliff Branch, walked over and said something to Mark Wilson. And you better believe, after 13 years in this league, that Mark Wilson is going to listen to number 21, Cliff Branch. Both still, wide receivers now split to the left, second from ten. I still look for Todd Christensen down there. Wilson. Christensen. First down. Uh oh. Bobbles the ball. It's loose. Seattle has it. Again. Came into the night leading the NFL along with Denver with 44 turnovers. They have three tonight. Christensen had the first down. It would have been first down, goal to go. Dave Brown makes the recovery. Well, Don, you called it. You said they'd be looking for Todd. Well, they almost had to. You go into that center part of the field out there with your big guys. He just a little turn in. Missed him right there. And that's the they There again, for they're the ball. Oh, man, that was Keith really Simpson, and he did nothing but go for the ball. He knew the tackle was assured. Now well, he had John Harris right his back, and Simpson did strip the ball loose. Well, you know, you run the risk of having a lot of broken tackles when you try to tackle the ball like that, but I guess they do a lot of tackling drills up here because the first man does an excellent job of securing the runner, and the other guys have that latitude to go after the ball. Seattle at their own five-yard line. This is when they really need to pull it together defensively. You see a little bit of, a little bit more give on that Raider of defense, but they, they didn't score, but the best, next best thing is to make a punt real quick like well, they got that ball. You're right, Don. We're saying the team that's been having the offensive success has been the team that's had the field position. If nothing else, the Raiders should, if the game continues to go the way it has, have the field position, if nothing else, for the rest of the game. We're seeing a lot of Dorning tonight because David Hughes injured his wrist. He was the starter along Ribs, brother, and along with Zach Dixon. Dornick ordinarily has been used all year long, only on passing situations. But he's made big plays tonight, and he just picked up four yards. It's second down and six. Craig. Uh -huh. He moved as well. That was incomplete. <laughs> really was. Well covered. Jack Squirek defensively, and once again, Squirek in there at linebacker for an injured Matt Millen. Well, they say that he's been accused of being conservative, which he is. In L.A. for a while, they even called Chuck Knox teams boring. But there's one thing you can say, he's always won. He was boring, he's but he won the division every year he was there for six years. Of course, he went up to Buffalo with you, O.J., and turned around a program up there, went into the playoffs, winning the division once and going in as a wild card last year in his first year here. He got Seattle into the playoffs the first time in their eight-year history. Remarkable coach. This is the biggest play they've had this is second half. Don't jump offside. Third and six. Van, and Van McElroy, and he held on to that football. He was spun around. He was shaken up earlier in the game. Boy, I tell you, that was Dan Dornick who was running the pattern. I think the ball was intended for him, and all he did was just reached one arm out and grabbed Dan leg. McElroy's leg as he was in the air, and he flipped right over on his back. Van McElroy once again slow getting up. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. It ain't lonesome. I'll tell you, it's not lonesome. Yeah, this is a little scary. 
And it's noisy in there. Yeah, it is. Rod Martin was there. He gets the ball, trying to get it to Dornick. And he did throw it behind him. And look at that split. He just got him right by the head. Looks like he came. Hopefully, if the worst thing would happen, he just knocked the breath out of him because he looked like he hit right on his back rather than his head. Well, we talk about the great fans up here. A lot of fans would be cheering for a hit like that, but this is a quiet, concerned fans up here in Seattle. As you can see, he makes a very nice catch. The ball's dead at this point. Even if he would have dropped it, the ball was already dead because he was on the ground and he had the ball secure. They were still take looking chances, after Van McElroy. If you were with us earlier, he went out in the first quarter. They worked on his neck, and it appeared that though he had, on a tackle, jammed his neck. And if you've ever had that happen to you, you know that you get a stinging, ringing type of feeling. But now he is being assisted off the field. We'll try and get a definitive word on the extent of the injury, but he once again he appears to be all right, and he is shaking that head and I would just hazard a guess that he has once again pinched a nerve in the neck. The fans awfully tough back there. You know, they, we talk so much about the two corners that they have, but when you look at the safeties, they're not bad either, are they? I mentioned the tackling statistic that McElroy has with him. So he's got to be a tough cookie. Seattle's first turnover, and it gives the Raiders great field position. They trail 17 to 7. We have 136 remaining in the third quarter. And the Raiders have the football inside the 27-yard line. Marcus Allen. And they string it out, but Allen gets outside. Greg Gaines stringing it out, and Allen will get three. There's McElroy. Oh, he is a good one, too. And you don't hear much about him because of the great play of Mike Haynes and Lester Hayes, but McElroy tied the AFC for interceptions a year ago and went to the, his first Pro Bowl. Well, he's his third year guy out of Baylor, Frank. He's, as the graphic earlier indicated, his 12th interception of his career. That's not bad. They marked it inside the 24. Frank Hawkins, single setback, second down and six. Hawkins, good opening. Good blocking over the left side where Shelby Jordan is working along with Kurt Marsh. I stepped out of Keith Simpson's hands there. Keith, he made a pretty good cut on him, but Keith just couldn't keep his feet or his balance, and Frank was able to move right through it. Inside the 15, first down and 10. Tom Flores. Now you can bet Tom just told Marcus to tell the whole huddle, you know those guys are going after the ball. I wouldn't remind my backs about her, about Plumlee. I wouldn't even say anything about it. Normally I wouldn't, but at this stage of the game, I'd say, look out for him tackling the ball. First down, Marcus Allen gets one away from one defender. Good yardage to the 10-yard line. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Joe Nash. You might those tackle sliding off a block to make the stop. You might see an indication in a situation like this where a team thinks that they have the best chance of running. I know, O.J., we used to have some plays we'd run to the left side, some we wouldn't run to the right, and vice versa. They've run to the left side here the last three times. Where it is, the Van McElroy should be back. Second down and six as we wind down the final seconds of the third period. Hawkins, good, running by Hawkins, and he should have another Raider first down inside the five-yard line. Clock stop with two seconds remaining in the third quarter. And I believe that's just to unpile the Seattle defenders. The offensive line for the Raiders seems to have had more surge in the last there it is. series. Is. Seattle over the Raiders, 17-7, to 7, but the Raiders are threatening. We'll be back for fourth quarter action. After We're back as we begin the fourth quarter action, 17-7. to 7, The Seattle Seahawks over the Los Angeles Raiders. It'll be third down, less than a yard to go for the Raiders. That was a very close measurement. It was so close, as a matter of fact, on the scoreboard, they already put up a first down and goal to go. They still have it up there. Yeah, they? they sure do. Well, partisan crowd, partisan scorekeeper. Third down and inches. This is really interesting. They have been spectacular on third down and short, third down and three or less. 17 consecutive times. They've been good on third and short. That's great. Good. One of the reasons, Hawkins, strong runner, 5'9", 2'10". He gets the first down. Now it's first down, goal to go. 
anything, that was certainly a big plus for the Raiders not to make that first down. They picked up an extra down there. Now, first down and goal from the three. Time to call air traffic control again. Maybe a little early. Hey, a couple of couple of flights, couple of short flights. Lyle Alzado has gone into the Raider locker room. Some kind of a leg injury. We'll try and get the word on that. But he had a big first half. Sort of unusual to see Greg Pruitt in the game now, but I guess not. They're thinking about throwing the football, obviously. Hawkins. That was your air control, but a different jet. Spinning over the top, down close to the one-yard line. It'll be second down, goal to go. Yeah, I think we get a little commuter flight coming in now. Here he comes, 32, flight 32 from <laughs> L.A. to Seattle. Marcus Allen in our second telecast. And he went for four touchdowns against San Diego. We understand that Marcus Allen had to leave the game because they had stick him on his hand. That's not allowed anymore in the NFL. He had to get it off. The guys are watching the two outside guys that they can turn that corner and get there before he gets to the line of scrimmage and jump. Good play. Second All effort right. by Marcus Allen. They caught him in midair, came down, maintained his balance, somehow got into the end zone, and the Raiders draw closer. Now, that was a good play, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a good play. Good hands up football. He's such a good athlete. Great body control. He gets down around that end zone. He reminds me of Paul Horning. Smells, they call it smelling the end zone. Smelling, smelling the, end the end goal zone. line. Look, Look at that. He tackled his balance. Beautiful play. Yeah, that was pretty. That'll bring Chris Barr out for the conversion attempt to bring the Raiders to within a field goal. A three-point separation. Seattle still maintains the lead 17-14 over the Raiders in a very important AFC Western game. Early moments of the fourth quarter. Seattle with a 17-14 lead over the Raiders. And now we have another return man for Seattle. Back there is Randall Morris, the rookie out of Tennessee. He joins Zach Dixon and Chris Barr will kick off. High kick. Morris takes it at the nine-yard line. And Morris works his way out to the 25. It'll be first down and 10 Seattle. Let's take a look at the scoring drive. Remember, it was a Van McElroy interception. Turnovers, ever so important in this game. Yep. Interesting note, all runs. That Certainly might. helps to start on the let 28. You, let your thumb rest if you're the quarterback. You were with us earlier. Mark Wilson, one of the pure passers in the game today, has had a difficult time reaching his receivers tonight. He has the thumb that was sprained a week ago against the Bears, heavily taped. But obviously, it has affected his play tonight. Kyle Alzado is back. Apparently, whatever was troubling Lyle Alzado is all right. You saw him walking down the sidelines toward the Raider bench. Craig is back on first down. He swarmed under. Down he goes. It was Bill Piquel, the nose tackle, who was filling in very well tonight for an injured Reggie Kenlaw. There'll be a loss all the way back to the 20-yard line. And they continue to work on number 54 of the Raiders. That, of course, is Daryl Bird, backup linebacker and a key member of the special teams. The crowd has certainly quieted down a little bit, haven't they? I think they've just realized that Mo may have shifted again. It's shifted back and forth tonight. Hard-hitting game. Two great defensive teams. But they're unable to generate anything spectacular in terms of offense. Largest moving around out there. Number 80. Second and 15. Oh, oh yeah. That it away. Great play. Mike Hayes. That was a terrific play. Largent started a little motion one way, came back another way. Mike Haynes was right with him. Ran right with him. And there's another one that has that great instinct to just reach out at the last moment. Look at this. And black knock that thing down. Well, you know, Largent hasn't been able to really beat them on a lot of passes with moves. So but they what they've been doing with him all night is running him on cross patterns just to run away from the defender. And Mike Haynes, it's a tough man to run away from. Third down, 16. At the 20-yard line. And Mo has definitely switched once again. 
Snow is so fickle. Craig. Trying to get to Turner. You'll see a flag on that. Lester Hayes could have let him go. That pass was well overthrown, Daryl Turner. But Lester Hayes has been burned tonight. He has given up a couple of touchdowns and a big gainer that got Seattle back in this game. 42 yards on that penalty. Lester takes so much pride in his ability to play that position. He might get to that point in this stage of the game where he's pressing a little bit too hard. Pass interference. Defense, number 37, first down. There is a Seahawk that is slow getting up. As you can see they're running. I think they're going to get their legs sort of, sort of tangled right here. Well, was, oh. Their legs got tangled there. 80. Turner was slowing up to come back to the ball. Hayes, who had been playing Turner, looked back for the ball and ran right up Daryl Turner's legs. But on a third and 16, the, the Hawks will take it any way they can get it, won't they? Can't right. say I blame them. We'll not try to identify the Seattle Seahawks until we get... No, I think it's Daryl Turner. I line think. on his number. Yeah, it was Turner. He never got up from that uh, entanglement. Entanglement, that's very good. First down and 10 for Seattle. They'll have the ball near the 30. Shake it up on that play that drew pass interference from Lester Hayes and a 42-yard pickup at a Seattle first down at the 39-yard line. Seattle on top, 17-14. Early minutes of the fourth quarter in a critical game in the AFC West. Craig. Craig has the ball popped out of his hands. I don't know if his arm is in motion or not. A flag is down, and we could get the holding call against the Seahawks. They'll be backed up. So much pressure, one of those offensive linemen felt he had to grab. I want to remind you, coming up tonight on Nightline with Ted Koppel, a look at US, the U.S. Bishop's controversial stand on the economy. Is it dangerous meddling? Guests include one of the bishops and William F. Buckley, Jr. That's tonight on Nightline, following your late local news on most of these ABC stations. Blair Bush, the center, detected holding. Craig had little or no chance, and they swarmed all over him. Tried to just pop that ball loose, and that was rather a dangerous effort. It'll be first down and 20, especially fast prevent players come into the ball game. Those are the penalties that have been assessed tonight. First down and 20, 49-yard line of the Raiders. Draw play, Dornick out of the shotgun. That's a fool of the Raiders. Dornick gets four out of it, back to the 45-yard line, where it will be third down at about 17. Good heads-up play by Otis McKinney that time. Obviously, they were looking for the pass in that pass defense, and Otis kept his head up, saw Dan coming through the line. Second down, I'll correct myself, I think I said third down, but it's second down and 17, and with Alzado on the bench, and we were looking for him, he came back from the locker room. The rookie, Sean Jones, out of Northeastern, is in there. Second round draft pick. Good pass rusher. They think they're going to have great things for him. And the shotgun once again. Craig. And in and out of the hands of Chris Caster. Ball was there. Just ran out of field. James Davis. Good coverage back there. Now it'll bring up third and 17. And you got the big four guys up front putting the rush on. They play a man to cover, man to man back here in the back. Say, look at them. Every one of those guys has got one of those Seahawks. Well, they're sticking to them, aren't they? Great shot. Now, here's James Davis. Perfect position. And right at the last, they didn't have to. That was James Davis, his Frank mentioned number 45, had good position. Boy, they play that man, don't they? All of them are looking yeah. at the man. Not even a glance back to see if the ball has been released. Turner is back in the game. Darrell Turner, who's been a real force tonight for Seattle. A rookie from Michigan State. Craig gets it to Turner. The flag is down. Turner almost pops it loose. Gets to about the 43-yard line. Only a gain of three, but again, a flag is down. We could have another holding call.
against Seattle. Raiders really putting the pressure on those offensive line, and they just apparently feel compelled to hold, trying to make sure that Dave Craig survives. Holding 78 offense decline. Fourth down. Bob Kreider over the right side. That'll bring out Jeff West in the punting unit. And Greg Pruitt will settle back around the 10-yard line. Jeff West doesn't kick it long, but he right up there tied for the lead in the NFL, kicking it out of bounds inside the 20. He is very good at it. Picks it high. This time he's just looking for the coverage, and he's going to get it. Scramble. And just down there. Knocked it out, Frank. Did they knock it out? I believe he did. I think that was Fred Young down there first, and I believe he tried to cover it. Good quite to get a handle on it. I believe it went out the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20. It's a touchback, and they had great position on it. We'll watch it from the reverse angle. That's why we have this camera. There he is, number 50, and he had it right in his hands, and bless his heart, it just slipped on out. And that was awfully close. Look at it. That is awfully close, isn't it? Well, that could not be any closer. Crowd doesn't like it. The official right on top of it. So the Raiders, rather than being inside their way, the head coach of the Denver Broncos, and the Broncos are looking on. They still have to play Seattle two games in the remainder of their schedule. They are 10 and 1 in the AFC West. Seattle into the night, 8 and 2. The Raiders 7 and 3. First down to 10, the Raiders. The ball at the 20 yard line. Again, Marcus, Marcus, right 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 Marcus. Marcus. Marcus Allen. And Allen will have the first down after the 32, a 13 yard pickup. Let's take a look at the playoff picture. We mentioned that Denver on, on top, 10 to 1. Danny's home. Danny's home watching films. That's the that's NFC the East. NFC. That's a tight race, too. Dallas and Washington tied up there at the top in the Central Division of the NFC. It's Chicago with a runaway lead. And look at San Francisco sitting there at 10 and 1. Those guys are playing some ball. They got Fred Dean back now. They're going to even be tough. We have them a little later in the year against the Rams. On first and 10, Wilson is back. Christensen is there. Christensen has his eye on the first down marker, doesn't quite get to it. As a flag been dropped back there, kind of in the deep secondary. Flag is down at the 45 yard line. It, yep, he had Cliff Branch over there. He was being double teamed. Kenny Easley was one of the two guys, and maybe they got a little too aggressive. Well, we'll let him sort, sort it out. Saddle does not seem too happy about it. And while they do, let's take a look at that AFC picture we mentioned a moment ago. Raiders desperately needing a victory tonight. There it is, the AFC. Miami with that 11-0 mark by the margin of a misconversion yesterday. Now, here are the other contenders. And they are just that, contenders at this moment. And the Raiders, we could be, they could be in a lot of trouble. 7-4 sitting right here with not too many left to play. Five games after the night. Short of the first down is Todd Christensen. Still haven't got this flag explained. Here comes Jim Tunney. Of contact, number 22 is declined. Play stands, it'll be second down. And then the contact against Dave Brown. I think he was bumping the receiver past the five yard limit. That's your double bump, right? Bump, bump, but a bump, bump, cost you five. Another Raiders option to take that one because it doesn't. First down, they almost got him a first down right here. They're so good at that. That's an incredible statistic. It, you mentioned earlier, Frank, about what, 17 times in a row. That third and one. That was ended tonight. They made it 18 tonight. 18. In the past, this would be a perfect situation for the Raiders to go downfield, but as we saw before the end of the first half, I think they'll be a little more conservative and just try to get the first down. It's a situation where a good back looks for it because he knows they'll all be up there trying to keep you from getting the first down, and you may be able to pop it and go all the way. Second down, less than one. Frank Hawkins has it easily out over the 45-yard line. The Raiders keep it alive with 10.45 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 
And Seattle on top, 17-14. Imagine Hawkins is going to wrap his hands around that ball, don't you imagine? Jim? Well, he had a little hesitation. I can see that he thought at one point, maybe I can bounce outside, because he did have a little hesitation at the line of scrimmage. He looked outside. He said, I better get the first down. Okay, yeah, he saw that big offensive line start moving forward. He says, I think I'll follow them. First and ten inside the 46-yard line of the Raiders. Seattle comes with the blitz. Cliff Branch all alone in a man-for-man -man coverage. Dave Brown covers Cliff Branch, but not until he moves into Seattle territory near the 49, gain of five. That Cliff's first catch of the night or second? Second, second catch of the, of the night. night. You know, he's the guy that we mentioned at the top of the show. He's missed two games, two and a half games, and the Raiders lose, but old Cliff's not there. He's not been terribly effective tonight, but maybe just having him back in there gives him a big lift. He needs one more, Don, for... What, 500? 500. That's, he has an amazing, amazing career. 13 years he's been doing it, averaging just under 18 yards of reception and 67 touchdowns over that time. Oh, no. Five. No, no, no. no. John Harris. And that was one that Mark Wilson shouldn't have thrown. He knows it. Yeah, he sure does. He has struggling tonight. That thumb has got to be affecting his performance. Really He's does. seen him too many times. Really does. He also had Todd Christensen open about 10 yards, 20 yards down the field. Had his mind made up when he went out there. He's throwing, when he rolls to his left, you see him trying to throw it. All arm. All arm. Trying to protect that thumb, but he didn't even come close to Cliff that time. Mark John up. Harris brings it back to the 20-yard line in Seattle, leading 17-14 with 9-21 remaining in the game. We'll have a first down and 10. A good tackle by Marcus. Dornick stays in, single setback. We told you about the injury to David Hughes Ribs. This is Dornick. Takes a handoff up around the neck and still works for about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. Let's watch the way he throws, Don. You could probably tell better well, than me. You see, he's just right there. He just didn't get his body through it. And that thumb, you know, I don't really know how. You can't tell how, how much is, it hurts, but you know it hurts him some. But he really didn't get his body back behind it. And he's, you're proud of it, aren't you, John? I don't blame him. John Harris picked that one off, but that was like almost fair catching. That one's up there so long. You ever watch somebody try and throw a baseball with a sore finger? That's how Wilson was delivering the ball. Second and seven, that's the time remaining in the game. Zach Dixon. Dixon got out of trouble and ran into a bunch more of it in the form of Jack Squiring. With a loss on the play. And that play you saw why Rod Martin played in the Pro Bowl last year. He held his man, he forced Dixon to think about going up. Then he forced him to go outside, and then he got in on the tackle. That's taking care of the inside out and right at you. <laughs> That's another, my responsibility. Another bad piece of news for the Raiders. Lyle Alzado probably will not be back. He has apparently a pull groin. So many pulls on this Raider team. One has to wonder about the surface of the Coliseum where they've been playing. It never really was put back into shape after the Olympics. Of course, they went right into the football season. Sandy and Spots, and that's how you get the pulls. Third and long. Up in the air, I think Greg's arm was hit. That will be an incompletion, and another flag is down. And we'll hear from Jim Tunney again. Preliminary indication, illegal use of hands on the part of Seattle. And, hey, the Raiders have not stopped coming all night. Illegal use of the hands, 78, declined. Fourth down. Bob Kreider, he's having a tough night against Howie Long. It's been such a good ball game defensively all night. You got to get these guys figured that uh, now at this stage of the game, the Raiders got to get this ball back down. They're three points down. They've got to come away with at least a field goal. Key possession, and they should get it in relatively good field position. Jeff West doesn't kick long. He's kicking well tonight, but he'll put it up there high. And Greg Pruitt awaits the ball at his own 40-yard line. It did go high. Good. And Greg didn't even hesitate. Almost when it left the foot, he knew how high and how long it would hang. He makes the fair catch at the 40-yard line. Good field position for the Raiders. They have 7.38 remaining 
Todd with a hot hand yesterday for the Saints. They're alive, certainly alive for a wild card shot. No Steelers. That's the West. And the Steelers. They own the Central Division thus far. First down and 10, the Raiders from their own 40 yard line. Marcus Allen puts the head down, bulls for about four. Out to the 44 yard line, Greg Gaines on the stop for Seattle. They were lucky to get a gain on that. Uh, somebody must be leaning or tilting because the Seahawks seemed to know exactly where they were running and everybody slanted to that way and the linebacker was on his toes leaning forward. He almost blitzed to try to get over there. It's second down and seven. Oh, well, sir, Kenny Easley. Kenny Easley steps in front his sixth interception of the season. A remarkable athlete. The pass attempt to Malcolm, Malcolm Barnwell, but once again, no zip on that ball. You know the thumb has got to be a problem for Mark Wilson. That just hung up there. That didn't have any zip on it. You can almost see him throwing the ball off of his fingertips rather than keeping that thumb involved where he comes across it with that thumb. More kind of palming the ball a little bit. Good job by Easley, as a matter of fact, to know where that out of bounds is. Yeah, he did a good job. I think Malcolm should have stopped at one point. Maybe, this, maybe he was supposed to run an up at him, but he was wide open. Maybe if he would have stopped, he wouldn't have had to lead him upfield so much. He's such a good athlete. And that Sports Illustrated article on him this week, they asked him, where are all the American decathletes? He said they're all playing strong safeties. <laughs> on first and ten. Dornick. Gain of about three for Dornick, and they are working on the right hand of Kenny Easley that, as you can see, has already been wrapped. He is obviously in pain. He says, just don't touch it. Just leave me alone for a minute. Just leave me alone. The smart will go away. Yeah. It, Hitting your thumb with a hammer, it feels so good when it stops hurting. They move it out over the 39, so it's a gain of four. Second down and six. Time starting to become a bit of a factor. But Seattle can roll up some first downs. Seattle leading 17-14. Uh -oh. David Craig being ever so careful at this point in the game. Didn't want to have the wrong thing called against the right defense. So he'll use a timeout. And Seattle will have two timeouts remaining. And move over and confer with head coach Chuck Knox. I want to remind you again, live this Thursday night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, 8 o'clock Pacific. It's the golden night in boxing history as five members of the 84 United States Olympic boxing team make their professional debut. You saw Mark Breland talking to Jim Lampley at halftime. Cornell Whitaker will be there, Melrick Taylor, Evander Holyfield, and Tyrell Biggs, all among spectacular cards. That's this Thursday live at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central, right here on ABC. And you don't want to miss that if you watch what Howard Cosell said compared, or maybe was even better than the 76 boxing Olympic team. And of course, out of that group in 76, named Sugar Ray Leonard. And who knows, maybe Mark Breland is the next Sugar Ray Leonard. They kick it all off on Thursday night, their professional careers. Well, my choice for the next Sugar Ray Leonard out of that group would be Parnell Whitaker. I was a big fan of his. I didn't really get to watch much of the boxing, but I go to Hollyfield myself. Well, then, should I pick one? Yeah, pick one. Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> 6 13 remaining in the game. Seattle holding on to a three point lead. They have a second down and six. The ball near the 39-yard line. Dornick getting a workout. Uh-oh. Late flag coming this time as Dornick gets up to about the 42-yard line. Holding is what the first indication we get from Mike Davis, who <laughs> from the Raiders. Holding Seattle. Not a very popular call with this record crowd here at the Kingdom. That is going to take away a third and two situation for Seattle. They'll be backed up. Chuck Knox, the only head coach. Let's listen to Jim Tony. Offense, 67, 10 yards. Down remains the ten. Reggie McKenzie holding. That's the 14th penalty. Start to mention Chuck Knox is the only coach in the game who has taken three different teams to the playoffs. He did it with the Rams winning 
five straight division titles out there. Then he went up to Buffalo and did it with the Bills, winning a division, going in as a wild card. And last year, his first year here, along with the assistants he brought, Tom Catlin and offensive coordinator Ray Karaski. Karaska. They did it right here. Second down, 16. Goodness. And 99, Sean Jones, the rookie from Northeastern, is saying he was drawn off. Who's going to argue with him? <laughs> him getting a little sticky, a little messy, a little sloppy here in the late going, but it has been a hard-hitting game. And Jim Tunney, you better not mess with him. He is pretty firm out there. Let's watch the center number, I guess it's 59, and he moved. Number 59 in the middle of your screen. Just a twitch. John Jones made the move. Blair Bush, <laughs> whether he did or whether he didn't, he still had to deal with it, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. Well, you call it a feint. That's what they call it in boxing, so he's feinting him a little bit. Okay, you can move a finger on that ball, and the way those guys are wired out there on a passing situation, they're going to move. So now, back to close to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down a little more than 10. 6.08 remaining. has first down yardage, but again, that flag is down where you always get the holding call. Well, that is tough. They've already had one really big long play call back tonight. Well, you, as I say, Howie Long is doing a job as, as well as he played last year. He's not getting to the quarterback as we listen to the call. Holding 64, 10 yards, down remains the center. Rod Essex trying to block Howie Long, but he's still, just like last year, getting a lot of holding calls against him. The ninth penalty. 75 is Howie Long. Essink is number 64. Yeah, he's pretty well got him in there. Oh. Hey, a lot of times, uh, offensive linemen, after a couple of calls against his team, well, they kind of figure they're not going to call three or four in a row, and so they take the risk. And obviously, Essink has got his hands full with Howie Long. He's being forced into that by the superb play and strength of one Howie Long. Second down, 21. Still a lot of time for the Raiders. They're down by three, 17-14. Six minutes remain. Oh. Craig loses the football. The Raiders will get it. Craig had the ball slapped out of his hands as he tried to scramble out of the pocket. And the Raiders will have it back near the 25-yard line. Dave Craig shaking his head. Doesn't make many mistakes. And that was one. And he probably could not have avoided because somebody just knocked the ball out of his hand as he raced out of the pocket. Bill Piquel fell on it. One of those things of what might have been if we look at this again, but the reverse angle, there, you there, really see it. Had it not been a holding penalty, they would have had a first down. Keep an eye on number 93, Greg Townsend. As he tries to go outside, he comes back, slaps the ball. He certainly did. He's been watching the Seahawks. <laughs> Here comes Piquel. Raiders, first down and 10. The ball just short of the 25-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. What an emotional trip this has been for these partisan fans. A record crowd of over 64,000 on hand. They've been up for it all week, and they have watched the fortunes of the Seahawks soar and then fall. Hawkins. I'll tell you, they are hitting. Gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Well, the Seahawks over the last few years have played the Raiders probably as tough as any team in football. As you know, last year, they beat them twice in the regular season. It's always a physical football game, and this has been a big weekend for L.A. versus Seattle. USC beat the University of Washington this weekend. And then you're going to get a Rose Bowl, and That's right. this is the second in the L.A.-Seattle battle. Second and six, safety blitz. Boom. Marcus Allen piled up. He'll get a yard out of it. It'll bring up third down and four. A passing situation for Mark Wilson. That was Joe Nash, the big nose tackle, who stepped around there and made it. You'll notice that 
tempo has picked up a little bit in the last few minutes, hasn't it? They're slapping around each other. Hey, the Raiders play that kind of game with you, but Seattle is not backing away from them. This has really been a rough football game. Well, we have some... Uh-huh. He says, goodness, goodness. Of an official timeout or something here. Mark Wilson wants to know himself. Here comes Jim Tunney to tell us. Please put 10 seconds back on the clock. 10 seconds. Please put 10 seconds. Clock reads 4.51. And Jim Tunney wants 10 seconds put back on the clock. You got it. All right. Third down and four. And there is Chris Barr. Having a good year. 17 of 22. Six out of his last seven. Not one of your long kickers. The Raiders six seem year, 50 yards. All right, Don, you were one of the game's great quarterbacks. No one. question about it. What do you call now? You have a quarterback with a sore thumb. Your team has been running relatively well. Yeah, I roll out to the right. I try to hit, uh, I try to get the ball to my tight end. That would be Todd Christensen. But I'll tell now, you, they were mixed uh, up. That's what I was going to say. Wilson is having a problem and Wilson uses another Raider timeout they have one remaining you could see him Frank in the huddle something was not right they've been trying to get messages to the sideline back and forth they didn't know whether they had the right players in there or not we Sam Bogosian on the left there the offensive line coach for the Raiders that's Tom Flores in the middle I would imagine that what happened really was is there some kind of mix up in sending in that play so now he's coming over there. Let's just get it straight. What is it you want me to run, coach? Here we go. We're the third down. This has got to be the big play. You know, we may be here till morning if this thing doesn't, you know, three points is going to tie it up. They want to try to get seven and get on home. Once again, so much in the line. Seattle, eight and two into the night. A win tonight. They go nine and two. They're one game behind Denver, the Raiders. And the win tonight, they will tie Seattle with an eight and three record. I mentioned the schedule of Seattle, which includes Two games with Denver and three teams under 500, Cincinnati, Detroit, and Kansas City. As for the Raiders, the remainder of their schedule could say it's marginally tougher. Next week, they're home for Kansas City. Then they have Indianapolis. They have Miami at Miami. That's not going to be a lot of fun. They will be on Monday Night Football again December the 10th against Detroit in Detroit. Then they have Pittsburgh, a team that's coming on. On the surfer, surface, you'd say the Raiders have the tougher schedule. They have one timeout remaining, as I mentioned a moment ago. They have had to waste two with mix-up here in the second half. Dandy Don says, roll out to the right and look for the tight end. That's it. And maybe Marcus coming out of the backfield. Third down and four. Wilson's last two passes have been intercepted. Wilson, the sack. The crowd, listen. Jeff Bryant. And what does that do for Chris Barr? It has really lengthened out the field goal attempt. Well, the good news, he's right in the middle of the field. <laughs> no, he likes to be on the right hash mark, though, doesn't he? Now, how they well, lost the Denver game trying to get that right hash mark. So you got to give the Raiders some credit. They needed five yards for a first down, and I think every one of the receivers were at least 15 yards downfield. 45-yard attempt. Mark Wilson will hold. Dave Dalby will snap. Never got it up. I don't know whether it's blocked or not or tipped. Look at the Seahawks. They're celebrating already. They think that's a ball game, but it's far from over. An emotionally charged crowd. Somebody may have got a hand on it. Could have been Nash, number 72. You bet. Boy, what a fine football player he's turned into. A great nose tackle. Now in his third year out of Boston College, he was a free agent. He's solid in there, and he made a great play. But Seattle has been making those great plays with their defensive unit and special teams all year long. First and 10, Dan Jordan. A runaway freight out of the 
30, to the 37. He'll get six. That one timeout remaining for the Raiders could be a factor. They're not going to be able to control the offense of the Seattle Seahawks. They almost have to save it for a possible field goal attempt in the closing minutes. Hey, that Dornick, you got to give him credit tonight. He's been cutting back against the flow, and he's been getting positive yards, and he's the only guy that's been doing much on the ground for the Seahawks. Yeah, when he came here in 79 from the Giants, he had 500 yards rushing. So he's been in there before. And they're going to work it. Dornick will have the first down. He's out near the 39-yard line. Oh, this crowd. Well, you mentioned earlier the two timeouts that the Raiders used could very definitely come back to home. I mentioned that Chuck Knox is very loyal to former players. The lead blocker for Dornick on that first down was Cullen Bryant, who played for Chuck Knox with the Los Angeles Rams. Charlie Young has made key plays tonight. He was with Chuck Knox with the Rams. First and ten. is buried by Howie Long. There'll be a loss. Well, they blitzed Mike Davis on that play. That's a man, Joe Nash, who's played super nose tackle for this team this season. The most improved player on this uh, defensive unit, and he's the guy that's made it happen for him, I believe, this year. But Mike Davis did a good job of blitzing on that play, and I think at this time of the game is when the Raiders really miss Matt Millen, and now that Lyle Ozado is out, those are two guys who are real tough against the run, and you can expect them to run the ball. Raiders have used their last timeout. The 2.25 remaining in the game. That's it. There are no more timeouts. They're gambling that they can prevent Seattle from getting a first down. They can stop the clock. They're using the two-minute warning. They didn't want Seattle just to run off 25 free seconds because that's exactly what they could have done. So they used their final timeout. Gambling. And maybe rightfully so on a defense that always over the years seems to rise to the occasion. And the strategy game is played out on either side of the field. Craig talking with Chuck Knox. Always cool, always calm, always collected. Jim Zorn is getting in there with a word. And over the other side of the field, the Raiders defensive captains from the field have gathered around Tom Flores. Can't really expect them to try to do a whole lot of dangerous things offensively, but I think they probably will try to throw it once. Uh, second down and about 13th, but I would look for something really pretty safe, whatever that might be. You're going to throw it fairly short, maybe out in the flat. Hope that the back can elude a tackler, pick up some yardage. Because one first down would just about do it with no timeouts left. Well, I tell you, if I was Chuck Knox, I'd rely on my defense. I'd run the ball. I'd get a good punt off. I have a team that came into this game with nine straight shutout quarters. It held a Raider team here to 14 points. And I think I'd put the pressure on the defense. Set to go. Bad. Second down and 13. Not bad, as a matter of fact. Four wide receivers are in. But we might see the draw. Chuck Knox likes to get rid of the risk. They'll go from the shotgun. Daryl Turner, the rookie for Michigan State in motion. There it is. Gain of only a yard or a yard and two. The Raiders looking for that one. Sean Jones in there on the stop. The second round draft pick out of Northeastern. And now Seattle will let the remaining seconds to the two minute warning tick off the clock. Chuck Knox, 11 years head coach, three different teams. Eight times he's been in the playoffs. And two minutes remaining. Seattle on top, 17 to 13. The Raiders have 17, 14, rather, three point differential, and the Raiders have no more timeouts. Third down and 12. Craig has received the final word from head coach Chuck Knox. Craig on the night in a hard hitting defensive football game, 11 of 25, 152 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and one interception. Craig with the clock stop at the two minute warning. We'll get this playoff rather quickly, but from now on, he'll use it all. 
Raiders really have to be thinking turnover. The first man will hit the ball carrier. The second man is going to try to pull that ball out. But the running backs, Cullen Bryant and Dan Dornick, are well aware of that. Dornick, he'll tuck it away. Covering it with both arms, and he's out of the 40 to the 42. It'll be third down and seven, and the clock continues to tick. Fourth and seven, Frankie, they'll let that thing run down another 30 seconds. So you're going to say it's 1.45 right now. Starts at 30-second clock right now. So it's going to be close to about a minute and, minute and 10 seconds. It's underway now, and Jeff West, the punter, will watch it very carefully as Greg Pruitt drops deep. Like they could even take a delay a game. Yeah, they'll take they'll it. Run, yeah. Take every second they can get off that clock. And run it right down to another nine seconds, eight to go. They're going to take a five-yard penalty. They could care less about that. They're more concerned about seconds. <laughs> we'll to mark off five, and then be Jeff West's tenth punt of the night. Been that kind of game. Maybe splitting edges a little bit here too much. Has not had a punt block in 380 attempts. That could be an old one that we have that up there. Yeah. Normally that's a jinx. That's a jinx. That's an almond, Jeff. Don't listen to anybody. Kick the ball. That's also a pretty good record. That's great for it. He's in his own 25-yard line. had already indicated the fair catch as Jeff West again gets it up there so high his coverage is right down there in the face of Greg Pruitt. Now we have 102 remaining. Mark Wilson on the night, 14 of 30, 164 yards, couple of interceptions, obviously affected by the sprain time from a week ago. We'll try to do the near impossible. crowd is already sensing victory and they are all here not a soul has left from this record-setting crowd of over 64,000 at the kingdom Wilson Marcus Allen drops it stops the clock with 57 seconds he would have had a little running room a little, but not much, and he wouldn't have been able to stop that clock. This is really the tough situation because of the no timeout situation that they're in. They're going to give them a little bit of that middle of the field, so you might want to think about, hey, trying to go for it big down the middle. Maybe somebody can break loose. The Raiders 21-2-1 on Monday night into the night. This one is in dire jeopardy. Got the two speedsters over here to the right. Look at Wilson, under pressure. Fires that one to Christensen, but the seconds will continue to tick. Uh-oh, Mark is down again. No, he's not Mark. I'm sorry. Now, Raider is down. Jordan. That is Shelby Jordan. The crowd is booing. There really is no advantage anymore to faking it, so I'm not going to speculate on that. I think it's one it may of have fine football players in football today. It may have cost them a little time, too, if they... I mean, about eight seconds had run off the clock as he laid there. They could have gotten to the line of scrimmage and uh, maybe gotten the playoff in another three or four seconds. So I don't think it's uh, much to their advantage to be trying to fake it at this point. Mark Wilson moves over and stops to Tom Flores. First down yardage carried out to the 34-yard line. The telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. And we talked about the schedule of Seattle and the Raiders. Denver's schedule will be Minnesota at home next Sunday. Then they have Seattle twice and Denver. And the final game of the season for Denver. Then they have oh. Kansas City and San Diego. And Shelby Jordan being helped off the field. And... That will bring in Bruce Davis. Well, if he's faking it, he needs to get a uh, screen active deal card because he's doing a good job of it. I'm afraid that he may have a severe knee injury there, the way he hobbled on it when he first got up. Again, the situation. The Raiders have no timeouts. They had to expand all three of them. 
in situations I know they would like to have back. They have a first down and 10 at the 34-yard line. 43 seconds remaining in the game. Now they start the clock as soon as Jordan got to the sideline. Marcus Allen. Get out of bounds. They'll have to hustle up to the line of scrimmage, throw the ball, get the end completion, stop the clock, and take it over. 20 seconds, and it's moving. Wilson, sacked, but it should do it. Mike Fanning, his second of the night. Another former Chuck Knox player with the Los Angeles Rams. Well, you got to throw it up. Inside 10. Look for the defensive foul. Another sack. I believe it was Mike Fanning again, along with Joe Nash. They're not the light. The point is over. And they say that all. Now Fanning is getting it on with Dave Dalby. Things must end. Big Fanning gave him a big head slap right there. They stopped the clock to let the receivers get back to the line of scrimmage. As soon as they do, they'll start the clock. Well, now there's a flag that has been thrown. That was big Jacob Green once again who made the sack. I don't know if it was a fumble or not, but he laid it to Mark Wilson. Four seconds on the clock. Here's Jim Tunney. start the clock. <laughs> Look at the secondary back there. Wilson, again, looking for that defensive foul. Oh, look, fair catch. Kenny Easley, his second interception of the night. This one is history. The Raiders drop to 7-4. Seattle goes 9-2. They remain one game behind the Denver Broncos. Listen to this crowd. stayed to the end. 